So last week, we started off our series of naming every single NBA team's greatest player of all time. Last week, we did all the Western Conference teams. Today, continuing part two with all the Eastern Conference teams. This Listen, should be a good one. I think last week, there were more Western Conference teams in the trenches. I was going through the list. I don't <laughs> think... I think there's a lot of, like, low-key, like, very historic teams in the East. So yeah. I don't I don't think that there's going to be, like, this many just, like, trash goats like, like there yeah. were last week. Yeah, yeah we're not going to be in the trenches like we were talking about the Clippers and Timberwolves and shit. <laughs> yeah, there's no Clippers. There's no Timberwolves. There's no fucking Memphis Grizzlies. Zebo. Well, <laughs> Zebo. Oh, yeah, the worst. You were the only one who brought up Zebo as like the GOAT. Like we, we weren't <laughs> thinking that. We were th But also, is this the earliest in the pod that we've ever slandered the Clippers? Yes. This is it's a new like record high, Donovan. Congratulations. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> That's awesome. I saw a comment yesterday where someone was like, y'all are my favorite podcast. I love listening to y'all while I hoop, but it's getting harder and harder to me to listen to the natural Clipper slander that comes from y'all as a Clipper I got bad news for you, buddy. We did it again. <laughs> Tell them. Tell them. This is not a Clipper-friendly podcast. This, that's not what we do. He was There's like, no oh, he was like, the natural Clippers hate makes me want to go listen to Through the Wire and let's keep it a buck. <laughs> I was like, good for you, man. Go listen to them because we're not going to stop slandering the Clippers. <laughs> You're going to have to do what you have to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, respect those shows. Go over there because we're not quitting it. <laughs> <laughs> we are who we are. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, drop a like and subscribe. If you're on audio platforms, leave us five stars, drop a review. Yeah, man, before we get into it, there's one thing I want to announce. We're going to be doing a giveaway, and the giveaway is going to be based on Twitter. We're going to be giving away a PS5 to one of y'all. I know a lot of y'all in high school don't got your new next-gen consoles yet. So over the next coming months, we're going to give away a PS5, and the way you, you, the way you enter to win is you follow us on Twitter at the Deep 3 Podcast, the main Twitter page for the channel. And the way we're going to do it is as soon as we hit 10K followers on Twitter, we're going to announce it. So that, that's y'all's goal for the next couple months. Get and us to 10K on Twitter, and someone's getting a PS5 entire ps5 you know how many people don't have a ps5 <laughs> i just got a ps5 bro you know what i might i might go ahead and make a couple ghost accounts it's a lot of y'all are stubborn and won't go ahead and follow and i'll submit myself into this giveaway like 30 times bro i'm playing dirty i don't care <laughs> no so i'm picking the winner i'm not picking mo so one of how would you know again get us a 10k followers on twitter and we're giving it away let's do it we'll see how fast it takes y'all i'm gonna say it doesn't take y'all two months to get to it We'll see if y'all surprise me and you get us there quicker. That's fair. But yeah, man, let's jump straight into it. Let's give the greatest player in team history for every single Eastern Conference team. And I think we should just start right away. Let's talk about the Celtics. Let's Who do is the greatest Celtics player of all time? This doesn't go. have to be that long. We can Where just we go going? ahead and go Larry Bird. Thank you. Yeah. Is it that? We talked about this before. I don't know why it's so unconscious that it's Larry Bird and not Bill Russell. Like, what makes it easily Larry Bird for y'all? I think, for me personally, when I think about... I'm thinking about it as if I'm a GM and what type of player I, I can easily build my franchise around. And then also on the other side of things, I look at, I look at what he's on the court and the versatility in his game. Of course, Bill Russell was fantastic for his era. He was the staple of the defense and all that great stuff. And he was playing through a treacherous time in just human history. But if <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at you as just a hooper, bro, I'm taking Larry Bird. Okay, I kind of feel that. And as you were saying, I want to switch my pick to Bill Russell. Let's go. <laughs> I, and it, it really has nothing to do with anything that, that you said. But I think that, like, <laughs> if we're if we're talking about like a specific, like a specific team, the fact that Bill Russell was a player and a coach at the same time for this organization mm -hmm. won the most rings for them. Listen. A majority of the Celtics rings came because of Bill Russell exactly. and, and everything that, that they were doing. So I think like there's a couple people that whenever you start like ranking and putting into lists, there's some people where like, you know, we do the respect thing, but there's a lot of people where it's like, it's for real. Like, hey, we're just going to get you, give you your respect. We already know that you're on this list. We're not really going to talk about you like that. Bill Russell's one of those people. I think that he's so far gone into like goat status, Celtics legend that we kind of forget to bring him back into these conversations. So I'll, go, so I'll go Bill Russell. Let's go. Yeah, I feel like obviously we all rank Larry Bird higher all time. Usually, we, like, typically Larry Bird's around like number five all time. Bill Russell, you know, falls into like the seven to nine range or whatever. 
And that's cool when you're talking about the rest of the league and the best players of all time across the league. But I think it's different when you're talking about just the team and what makes their franchise's greatest player. Yeah. We talked about last week with Kobe and why you guys ended up outvoting me and we went with him for the greatest Laker of all time because there's something to the fact of longevity, what you mean to the team, what you did for the franchise that, you know, that can kind of um, make up for the fact that somebody else might be a better player than you overall. And I think when you are the guy who obviously 11 championships are 11 championships, but you made the Celtics the dynasty they are, the 80s run doesn't happen unless the 60s run happens. And that was obviously built by Red Auerbach and everybody, but on the back of Bill Russell, they don't become this powerhouse team that can carry the momentum for decades if it wasn't for Bill Russell. Obviously, everything he did for the NBA is outstanding too. But for this team specifically, he like that's the house that Bill Russell built. Yeah, yeah I can agree with that. I'm, I'm so happy you guys added. I'm not mad at it. Listen, I will go ahead and be on Bill Russell's side 10 out of 10 times. <laughs> and I'm also happy that you guys in, added in to this conversation, the influence factor and just overall, you know what I'm saying? Using that, the house that he built, that hits heavy, bro. There's not a lot of players <laughs> who have that type of pull and went ahead and built an organization brick by brick. And as a player, of course, he did that. As a coach, that's very important too. I'm not really factoring that into it because we're talking about the greatest players, not the greatest people or <laughs> yeah, person or anything like that. Either. <laughs> so um, I, I agree with that overall. I will happily be outvoted. Let's go. Bet. Swayed you guys both to the dark side. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> what do you mean oh by that? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> That's not all. Right. What do you Come mean by now. that? Shut hey, the man. Fuck up. Shut you realize who we up. are right now? <laughs> Shut no, no, no. You're going to have to beat these allegations for the rest of the pod. Understand. The Y'all need to understand. And listen, in nearly every like fantasy league Isaac goes to, Isaac has a very specific type of player that he likes to go for. You know, first guy in, last guy out. Jim oh Rat, he's good on the board. That type of player. That's that's subconscious right there. We're, I'm being slandered because I have Luka Doncic on my fantasy team. <laughs> we're we're going to monitor the situation. That, that was this is crazy. Uh, I'm new allegations. Five against minutes you, saying Isaac. why the white man isn't the greatest, and now I'm getting allegations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to post a black square on IG. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next up, we can gloss over this one. The Chicago Bulls are next on my list. Obviously, it's Mike. Who would be second if it wasn't Mike? That's where it gets interesting because I don't got a lot of options. I, Would you say Scotty Pimpin? I guess you'd have to, right? Yeah. Yeah, we kind of have to go Scotty. Just got to go Mike Sidekick as the second best. He was really fucking good, bro. Yeah, great. I don't, and I, it's just like they just they have an absence of top end talent outside of that dynasty run. Like you go Artis Gilmore, the one and a half years of Derrick Rose. And like DeMar DeRozan probably creeps out this list pretty quickly. Like, Hell no. I put Joakim Noah that's before the, I put Joakim Noah on the list true. before that. That's Hell true. no. Jo- yeah, Joakim Noah. Noah is easily top five. De- I guy. was joking about DeMar. Is DeMar a top 10 bull of all time? <laughs> top 10? No. No. Yo, you, no. <laughs> listen, list them. List probably, me 10 bulls greater than DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> listen, this is a nasty entire, list, bro. The entire 96 bull squad. No, you can only get so far. Okay, We're not bye, putting bye. Steve Kerr above DeMar DeRozan. Like, it's just different tiers. Yeah. Okay. But you can go You can go Jordan, Pippen, Grant, Rodman, Gilmore. That's five. Okay. Joe Keem. Okay. Uh, that's. Sure. Okay. Was, we'll go Joe Keem. Why not? Rose. Are you going to throw Jimmy Butler in there? No, <laughs> Jimmy Butler didn't do anything. He left super early because I didn't want to pay him. Well, at I'm his peak prime blinking. over there, he did. He had like one all-star season with the Bulls. DeMar Rosen's had, what, two or three now? Two or three. Actually, was it all-star this year? I think DeMar, actually, no, ah. DeMar's probably only an all-star with them one time. Let me see. Yeah, I, I think he was always an all-star think, one time. Let me make it clear. I'm not saying DeMar Rosen should be a top 10 player in Bulls history. I'm just laughing that it's a conversation because the Bulls are so devoid of talent outside of that Jordan run. Well, listen, that okay. playoff run that Rajon Rondo had, listen, that could maybe... Oh, know, my God. Up Let's up not do that. I, Let's not do that. <laughs> okay, DeMar's been there for You're two right, years, though, and he but. has two All-Stars averaging 28 points and 25 points when you round up. Two All-Stars. Hey. I think... Was that many, was he all NBA the first wins? year? How many playoff wins? Oh, I ain't going to Maybe one. They got gentlemen swept the first year. Listen, is he yeah. Ben Gordon? 
<laughs> oh my god. I ain't go <laughs> I ain't go. I'll tell you this, he's not higher than Lou Aldang. <laughs> he's he's just not. With the depression that DeMar DeRozan was able to uplift the Bulls and every single Bulls fan known to what do you mean mind? uplift? They still suck. Bro, <laughs> when Lonzo Ball was there actually playing basketball, <laughs> all the months. Bulls were out of hell for we're like talking about two, two months, months, months of basketball. Exactly. That that that, that hits, bro, compared Listen. to what they went through. Yeah. It hits. The Bulls <laughs> were the one seed for three weeks. That's 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 might as well be a championship. The way listen, yeah, we all talk. <laughs> listen, obviously everybody the like, MVP. Stop, stop. Listen, obviously <laughs> everybody like wants Alonzo to come back. They talk about those two months. There's yeah. like, listen, man, like we were there. Who knows? <laughs> like we could have, we really could have been one of the you know five best teams of all time. And it's like, guys, like relax. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> we better went back to back if we had Alonzo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, Jordan's one. Uh, Pippen's two. My yeah, Robin can't be three. Robin was only there for three of the rings, and he's just Dennis Rodman. Who remember, is Artis Gilmore three? <laughs> just mm-hmm. just Dennis Rodman's a, a funny phrase. Like yeah, you know, but he's just not like he's the third player on the team. He's not like typically yeah, the top we'll of the guys we'll that carry three. more of a load. We'll go Gilmore three. Okay, I'm fine with that. Next team, who is the greatest platoon? Yeah, I can't talk today. Who is the greatest player in Indiana Pacers history? That should be Reggie right. Miller, yeah. no doubt, right? Yeah. I think so. Uh, like, is it, who, there's no competition, really, for them, is there? Not really. No, I don't I don't think so. I mean, Reggie played his entire career. Yeah, yeah. The, the longevity the alone, like, it's hard to pass it. Yeah. yeah. Like, you could argue that Paul George was don't a better you, player. I, but, oh, God, no, but, whoa, whoa. But, okay. but, 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 Paul George might be the better player at their peak, but he wasn't there long enough. Didn't get them as far. as Well, he made a conference finals run, so I guess nearly as much playoff success. But it just the longevity is so night and day different that maybe if Paul George was still there today, you could argue that because he'd have equal longevity almost. But Reggie just did too much in that uniform. Yeah, I think Reggie was... It's hard because, like, I think Reggie, you know what I'm saying, while he was there, the impact just outlasts. It's, it supersedes everything that Paul George has done. But when you talk about things outside of basketball, which is my favorite part of the game, <laughs> the influence that Paul George had was crazy, and of course, so, so it was Reggie. What Reg, Reggie's or don't don't play this game. You know Maybe exactly you pull what out Carmelo's son, and you hear all these young kids talk about. Do you know Paul George? <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Did Paul George? Have, I'm being 100 percent for real. Listen, no, you have not been on TikTok. You haven't been on Twitter. You got fucking number two overall pick saying Paul George is the greatest player of all time. Everyone talks about Paul George's back. So smooth compares him to Kyrie and all that stuff. <laughs> I saw a tweet He's about a, this. Yeah. I saw like, a tweet about it. They were, they were explaining it where somebody said that Paul George is basically the big wing with guard skills that people talk about KD as being. Exactly. And I think that makes sense because, you know, people don't uh, be influenced by LeBron or... I mean, no, no, I'll just focus on LeBron. People aren't influenced by him because he's a genetic freak that has athleticism they can never capture. You can't replicate LeBron's game. KD's is almost the same way. The only people that are influenced by KD are seven footers who can dribble. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. outside of that, the average kid isn't like, oh, I got to play like KD. But a kid coming up that's a small forward and wants to have a little bit of a guard bag, they probably grew up influenced by Paul George. Other generation that was T Mac, it's probably Absolutely. him now as the, as the, big, as the big guard yeah. prototype. Yeah, with the way Paul George kind of came out of nowhere, being a late lottery pick for Indiana, that too. and then just blossoming onto the scene, you know, showing up in the dunk contest, having that type of run, looking LeBron James in the fucking eyes, and absolutely decimating Chris Anderson uh, back in, what, 2013 or 14, I believe? I don't remember one of those two. And that run, that entire run built up a lot of respectability, and he looks like the next one up until he snapped his head yeah. leg in half and stuff. And then him coming back, you know what I'm saying? Just as good as or even better as a player adds a lot too. So, but Reggie Miller is Reggie yeah. Miller. And <laughs> I'm not arguing against that whatsoever, but Paul George's influence and all that is, shouldn't go swept under the rug. Yeah. Paul George can be number I'm, two. I think I'm, I'm distraught. Uh, but it's, <laughs> I got a PG 13 okay. Indiana okay. Jersey, bro. You, you mess with the wrong one. I will it's, die for this conversation. It's okay. it's, it's, yeah. It's, this yeah, Don, Donovan's been a PG slanderer for many years, and I get it. He's had a lot of shortcomings, and he had a lot of moments for a few years where he made himself very hateable. But I think over the years since then, since like the bubble moment where like the PG slander like plateaued, since then I think a lot of people have come to appreciate his career. And like once the Twitter slander isn't in our heads quite as much, 
Listen, yeah. if you are getting slandered, make a fire podcast, right? If you're an <laughs> NBA player, just get a fire podcast. Everybody will like you, right? Make a make a very, very good Nike shoe and get a good podcast. <laughs> You can get your cloud back up, you know. But I mean, that's the thing, summer. though. Being likable matters. Like that's the thing. Yeah. you're right. You're right, though. But like, part of the reason PG was slandered so much is people perceived him as not being as likable as other stars. Like, if Devin Booker came out here and failed in the bubble too, people okay, never mind. People don't like Devin Booker anymore either. People are souring <laughs> on him. But you know, Curry could have that moment, and people <clears throat> will get over it because he's Curry, and people like him. Paul George was perceived as not being particularly likable, whether it be for whatever reason, if it was valid or not. Now he's more likable, so now he's going to get a passport. Yeah. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah. One of the darkest moments for him was when he was, of course, the Indiana days weren't great when you're getting constantly paused, pounded by LeBron James and the Cavaliers. <laughs> but <laughs> I, 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 I saw now. it. Come on now. And I said it. I know. But the most unlikable, one of the more That's unlikable crazy. things and moments is when Damian Lillard fucking gamed, series gamed his ass, and Paul George just had the guts to say that was a bad shot, and he still stands. Yeah, for it towards his day. Exactly. So that played but a big part of it. It was that, and then uh, and he people perceived it as him making excuses out for the bubble because he was talking about how hard it was, which I think that was a little unfair because people were like discounting the mental aspect of being in the bubble and how hard it was for players. But I think you're right. That compounded with the bubble kind of let people to be like, this guy's whack. Yeah, and hitting the side of the it. backboard, him him calling himself <laughs> playoff P, and then that's ends up dude, having the absolute part. shitter hitting the side of the <laughs> yeah. backboard, bro, and just, just embarrassing I'll, I'll himself. Never forget it. I'm, I'll yeah, never right. forget these moments. People right. call him, him playoff, call playoff P, P. E, e, bro. <laughs> yeah, and that, then getting that worked by Joe Ingles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But listen, he recovered from that reputationally, and now we all fuck with him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Carmelo Anthony's son was just on TikTok calling him the goat, bro, calling him one of the five best players of all time. He's young. He don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've always liked Paul George. Yeah. But all right. Next team. Who is the greatest player in Atlanta Hawks history? Mo? Dominique. Dominique Wilkins. Um, he was a magnificent player. Truly elite. Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize how good he was because he was just in the same conference as magic i said magic my bad larry bird and he would constantly get destroyed by them because you know his team wasn't as up to par and also he was still growing and learning as a player too and when he was able to go ahead and put things together you know he just had he just mm-hmm. had a lot of shortcomings but it really wasn't his fault but the type of player he is he's fucking electric he tore his acl came back all that but that was he's, he's just Achilles. a fantastic player yeah Achilles, my bad. There we go. Yeah. Fantastic and back in the time when player, that was bro. like impossible, where people thought that was a death sentence, like your career was over. And he's like the first star player to recover from that. Yeah, exactly, bro. And his archetype of player and what he was able to do consistently, consistently I think his career averages for his prime with the Atlanta Hawks or his entire intention, my bad, may have been like 26 and 7 or 27 and 7, something outrageous like that. So gen- yeah. genuinely a generational player, just in an unfor- unfortunate situation surrounded around unfortunate type players and people yeah he's just one of those players that his talent never quite matched success wise just because teams were never equipped that well and it was you know pre-player movement days so once you're with your team you're usually with that team unless they decide to trade you and it was just one of those things where it never broke his way he never had that team that was quite competitive enough another player who's probably in this mix if we're being objective is Bob Pettit he's kind of like the he's kind of like Bill Russell in the way that like he yeah. was like the dominant player of his era back then, but he's not Bill Russell, so we all kind of just like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> we all just yeah. forget. Can, can, I will if you say, want to say him and be old, go ahead. I don't really care. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm definitely not leaning that way. He was the first true superstar of the NBA. That's that's true, but I just I think with with that with Atlanta, and I think a lot of times like what you'll see with some of these franchises is like the. When the main guy is this like above the rim superstar, they are also like as flashy. Like Dominique's, his nickname is literally the human highlight film, and so like that yeah. reson that that resonates with a lot of people. And so I think being being that flashy and the fact that he was going toe to toe with Bird, it I'll I'll give Dominique um, yeah my nod. And I think we can only we can only do so much with respecting past decades. Like, yeah. we go back to the '60s, respect Bill, respect Bill Russell because he was so absurdly dominant. I can get with it. Someone drafted yeah. in 1954. Actually, I don't even think they had a draft then. Somebody who started playing in 1954. 
it's a bit much for me. <laughs> yeah, and for Dominique Wilkins, he's literally an Atlanta boy. He went to school at UGA, University of Georgia, and shit like that, and he literally wanted to only be an Atlanta Hawk. And so he means influential wise a lot to the city too because he's homegrown. Okay. Yeah, we'll defer to but, you. You're you have a better pulse on the city than we would, obviously, being from there. But all right, let's move on to this. what is so funny about that? <laughs> Wait, why are people laughing? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I had sent y'all a meme earlier today oh, yeah. about Atlanta, and I'm thinking about it right now. <laughs> yeah, Atlanta's quite the place. I don't I won't even get into that. Yeah. <laughs> Hellcats, right. next team we have Chargers and all that. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the greatest player in Brooklyn Nets history? Uh, we got to go, Jason Kidd. If we're doing what? the whole really? franchise. Yeah. 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 He's okay. Well, Mo, before you get into it, Mo, who are you thinking? Since you're so surprised by that. Well, I was mostly I was thinking about Julius Erwin. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. You're tripping, Donovan. <laughs> well, no. Well, no. Because that, cause that franchise, cause that franchise, like the New Jersey stuff, wasn't he in in Philly for a majority of his NBA career, though? I'm tripping too. Don Mo said Julius Irvin, and for some yeah. reason my brain thought we were talking about the 76ers. You're right. You're hundred percent right. No, it's Jason Kidd. I don't know why Mo just like reverse psychology me into thinking you were wrong. Well, I was just curious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. <what are> you- <laughs> but continue, so yeah. my bad. Yeah, so this whole this whole like Brooklyn Nets, New Jersey Nets, it's going to be Jason Kidd. Like they their most success that they had came with him running the point, running running this this offense. They get to back to back finals. Um, that is true. Listen, Jason Kidd's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best passers of all time. One of the best point guards of all time. I think it's fairly easy because um, I don't think that yeah nobody's really had that amount of success in that jersey. So Kidd yeah. gets the nod. The only people that could have. Some people just like to say Brick Lopez. <laughs> He's oh up there God. because of the longevity there. And Kid wasn't there that long comparatively. Shout out Brooke. Maybe he's top three if you want to go like Vince Carter than him. But he's not suppressing Jason Kidd. He's just a whole other tier of player. KD could have did it, but he left too early. If he would have stayed around for another few years, maybe he could have pushed him. But I think this is probably one of the easier ones. It has to be Kid. For sure. I agree. I agree. Yeah, Who listen, even? this fran- this franchise really is not that exciting. And mm-hmm. I think that their move to Brooklyn was one of the most exciting things that's ever happened to them outside of the final. So they yeah. they need to catch up. Okay. Well, we talk about Julius Irvin and the mix up I just had with that name make me think we're talking about the 76ers. So yeah, let's, let's talk on. about the 76ers. Who is the greatest 76ers player of all time? For me, I'm going Allen Iverson. I think he's okay. I, th- I think he's the best sixer of all time. I think when you talk about like M- Embiid has the MVP right now. It doesn't mean the same as Allen Iverson's MVP to to that city. I think the, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't think it is. We've already had this discussion in terms of like is it like a Mickey Mouse mm. MVP and you know stuff like that. But when yeah. they but when they talk about like the way that Philly fans are and somebody who matches the energy of what the city of Philadelphia is, Allen Iverson is that. And for him to take them to the finals, I, I know that, I know that like they've won a finals prior to that. And so, if you want to say Dr. J, by all means, I go do. ahead. <clears throat> but I'm going Allen Iverson. Yeah. See, it's I hard. think your point about uh, your point about the Allen Iverson MVP meaning more for the city than Embiid. I think that's a more impressive MVP for sure. But when I think meaning more for the city, I don't know about that because jo- Joel represents so much of the last era of 76ers basketball and the pain they went through with the process. So I feel like his MVP was probably a really crowning jewel moment to like validate this era. So I don't, I don't know if it means I don't, more I to dis- the city. I disagree only because I I think for them, the only, the only way that they can get like their crowning moment isn't going to come with Joel winning MVP. I think it's going to come with them getting to a conference finals at least or getting to an NBA finals because this entire thing was we're going to tear it down get the player and we've known for the past two three years that you know with or without the MVP that Joel Embiid is that good the the issue for them is why do we tear it all down to get this player and we're not going to even get to a conference finals like once they get once they reach that level of team success then we can say, okay, the process, quote unquote, worked. And you can even say that technically it works now. But yeah. for AI to do that at 
six feet, you know, and and do everything that, that he did. Yeah, with Again, his running, play style. running with Pepe Sanchez yeah, and, and yeah. Eric Nolan <laughs> on him. That's, that's very important. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the crown jewel moment cannot be just to get your ass bounced out of the second round. Like the Facts. crowning jewel, like you said, Donovan, is to have the actual jewel that really matters. And that's the whole entire reason to, you know, saying put your entire team through that pain. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to lean Allen Iverson. Julius Irvin is a whole nother conversation, but I'm just comparing to Joan Bede right now. But when it comes to why I might say AI in totality is because I'm thinking about the influence that he had, not only to Philly fans, but his influence to the entire NBA world and to just all inner city kids growing up and shit like the tattoos, him going ahead and getting braids, the shooting sleeves and all that is like he had he's one of the five most influential basketball players or one of the most 10 at least influential yeah. basketball players ever. He's the reason why someone like Dwayne Wade wears number three. And he made a lot of things cool and the fashion that he did it, the swagger that he that he did it on, the charisma, all that, the whole nine just does it, bro. He has this little white kid, bro, from the <laughs> suburbs. He probably lives in a beautiful four bedroom house with his mom and dad going ahead and making their 70. He has no struggle. Why is he putting tattoos on his body like that, bro? It's because of Allen Iverson. I love how tattoos is a struggle now. Oh, <laughs> 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 that, that's cool. I agree. I would go Allen Iverson over Joel Embiid. But we're burying sure. the lead here. It's obviously Julius Irving. Like, it has to be. Even if that's wanna, another thing. I don't think it's yeah. obvious. No, it's quite obvious. I mean, just even if just for the fact that he won the 83 championship over the Showtime Lakers, like, that alone, that, that chip, I know we like to congratulate Allen Iverson for making it to the finals and losing. Julius Irvin made it and won. So, like, end of the day, that could be the deciding factor alone. Yeah, but also when you're tough. talking about influence and how... We Julius Irvin had a lot of influence, too, though. He had so Precisely. much fucking influence. Crazy so, influence. He yeah. was the Allen Iverson of his time. Like, he was the flashy guy that he had the look with the afro, the style of play with the high-flying cradle dunks. And the way that people talk about how Jordan kind of made the league be built around guards, in a way. Julius Irvin was the first player, I think, that you built a championship team around a wing. People kind of forget that, but that was also a very influential thing to help move people away from the big man centric thinking. I think Jordan was kind of the nail in the coffin that we knew that we can build around perimeter players, but Julius Irvin started that thought process, I think. But is that more influence on the league or just for like the Sixers organization? Because if we're like, if we're talking about like a greatest players of all time and you want to bring that up, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I think it, I think that holds more weight in that conversation than this one. And sure. I think if, if we're fair. just, I think if we're just keeping it to this franchise, like AI, AI and being like, listen, the, the city of Philadelphia identifies themselves with a fake movie character, Rocky, like that, like that, <laughs> the idea that some underdog fighter is going to be here. And like Allen Iverson is that. Like he is on the Mount Rushmore of Philadelphia sports. I think that he embodies everything that they see themselves as. That's why I'm going with Allen Iverson. I I don't yeah. I don't disagree though that that Julius Serving like is better. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's it's just also just like a talent gap. Like he's just so much better of a player. Like four time MVP, five time All ABA, seven time All NBA, sixteen time All Star. Then he has the chip. Like at a certain point, just the guy that's way better and was way better when he was on the team. I think has to get it. That's true, but at the same time, like also way he won the chip. Like it comes out of that too. He got the much chip. That is very true. <sighs> but the vibes. I, I guess I'm the yeah. I guess I'm the <laughs> deciding factor. Shit. And you know where I'm leaning. I'm going with Allen Iverson, bro. Sorry, Isaac, you're outvoted with this one. <laughs> this, this is a, we're, that's a, it's ridiculous. <laughs> no, this sorry, is like man. sacrilegious. No, I'll go. Listen, listen. Last when we were doing the Western Conference, I was picking guys because of of some of the success that they had. So I'm I'll go Dr. J. You're flip yeah, flopping. What the hell? I have to. I, listen, I'm going to be consistent. It on has it. to be Julius. I'm going to be consistent. I am mad at it. I am mad at it because yeah. it's it's toe and toe, neck and neck for me, man. Yeah. All right. Next team we're going to talk about. Less exciting. We're taking a step down. Damn. <laughs> Probably the least the least exciting on the list. But we got to get it over with. Who is the greatest Charlotte Hornet of all time? Boo! <laughs> all right, this team we sucks. talking. We talking. Courtney Lee, <laughs> Al Jefferson, Al Jefferson, Egghead yeah, Henderson. Al <laughs> yes, sir. Oh um, man! No, it's probably Kemba Walker, and yeah, 
That's about all I have to say <laughs> on this franchise. Shout out to Kemba. Uh, so are yeah. we going Kemba Walker over Alonzo Mourning? Yeah. I mean, I, he Alonzo Mourning is this franchise, right? It's yeah, he's Charlotte. Think, yeah. think it gets so, so confusing. Yeah. Alonzo, okay, I guess never mind. Oh, Alonzo only played there for three years. Why did I think he was there for longer? Because that's yeah. like that's like the only stretch of success that they ever had, and so you just see those <laughs> highlights on repeat, and you're like, man, like they were, he was there for like ten years, and it's like, hey, yeah. all these highlights came from two playoff games. Like, yeah, it's, he was it's in actually Miami. not a lot. <laughs> He was in Miami for like 10 years. I thought he was a Charlotte predominant player in my head this whole time. Nah, it's, That's it's crazy. Kemba Walker. Yeah, I guess yeah. it got to be Kemba. I don't even know who else would come into it's, the question. Yeah, it's, like it's definitely Kemba Larry Johnson. Walker. Oh, yeah, yeah Larry, Larry Johnson's other too. Yeah, yeah, Larry Johnson was fucking nasty. He was Zion Williamson before Zion Williamson. Uh, games are so similar and easily comparable. This dude was a fucking maniac and hella marketable and all that. And I guess you could say he meant a lot to the city, but I mean... He had a very short-lived career. I have no idea. <laughs> he had a short-lived career. So the only thing I know is uh, North Carolina really fucked with Cam Newton. Outside of that, I don't Hell know. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Love Cam Newton. Oh man, yeah, he's <laughs> Cam big, Newton. Big Cam Newton guy. Hell yeah. Cam Newton 2015 guy. Cam Newton. He, Good woo, grief. That's a moment. Let's talk about it. Different breed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But yeah, it's Kemba, dude. Soon to be Lamelo Ball if he doesn't leave. No, it's really, like so the simple. bar is not high to clear. It's not high at all. Yeah. It's not high to clear. And, and here's here's the real reason why is because everybody before Kemba Walker and even people in Kemba Walker's era, Michael Jordan can come down and practice and smoke all of them, right? So <laughs> like, so he could eat. Michael Jordan could have walked down from the owner's box and just played one on one, and every single one of those players would have gotten cooked. They're not. You telling me Garrett well, Garrett Wallace would be cooked against Michael Jordan? He was getting destroyed. <laughs> yes. There's stories. Yeah, <laughs> there's stories. All of them are trash. Oh man, I, I love <laughs> name dropping just the most random Re- players. Rel- relative trash, but yeah, like they're not they're not all time status. Yeah, for sure, you're right. They just have a lot of like low tier, borderline fringe all star players, and that's like that. <laughs> oh, that's like the Al Jeffersons and then the Kemba Walkers of the world. Which is hey, like, Mo, I don't think. I mean, Donovan. I don't think he knew that he was saying that again. <laughs> no, no, he, I he did. Definitely did it. Okay, I did. No, I did. I caught you that. I was going to go on. Hold on, was that, that ironic? <laughs> yeah, I was going to go on, but I was like, we can move on. The Hornets, please. please, not the most interesting team, please. Yeah. Back to a relevant one. Who is the greatest Miami Heat player of all time? This is clear cut. This yeah. is Dwayne Wade, and that's the end of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I don't disagree, but there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be like, don't I mean, care. LeBron's the best player of all time. His best version was there. So can you explain why it can't be LeBron? LeBron was there, and the way that you look at LeBron with Cleveland is the same way that people in Miami look at Dwayne Wade. Like that is a guy that they drafted and he was there for basically his entire career. He won, he, listen, he won them a championship in his third season. He's the, all-time, he's the all-time leader in basically every category that they have, probably except for like rebounds or whatever. And maybe even that, but like Dwayne Wade is, he lived in Florida forever. They named the, named but like the the county is dade county people call it wade county everything miami is so synonymous with doing with dwayne wade and even though that lebron was better i think everybody kind of feels like that period was just like a rental for lebron and it was a stepping stone in lebron's journey but absolutely but it's not like but he is not synonymous with with the heat and yeah, so, but dwayne wade is Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree. I think Dwayne Wade is similar to Dirk with the Mavs, where, like you said, he is the Miami Heat. And even if he didn't have the longevity there, that 06 championship alone is more impressive than anything LeBron did with the Heat, which is hard. Is just like a big thing to say, because LeBron was the greatest peak of all time with the Miami Heat, won two rings, but he did it with Dwayne Wade, right? Like that's like that's what made it yeah. so easy for him. Which I'm not say easy because they were impressive champions. They played good teams, but that 06 team, like I said, 25 years old with a washed up Sat Shaq as the second best player, <gasps> who was still good, but he wasn't one of the best players in the league by any means. He was the second best player in that team behind Wade, which should tell you something that you're already better than B plus Shaq when you're 25, 
Yeah. That's ridiculous. That that chip alone is more impressive than most people's goats resumes. Yeah, homegrown champ, homegrown Sarge is hitting entirely different because you feel like you grow up with them. You've seen this man yeah. in the trenches. You've seen this man at the highest of highs and the lowest of lows and the middest of mids when they lost LeBron and <laughs> D Wade was average a cool 19, 20 points and they had fucking what's that? Some they had the most random players in the team just barely surviving before Chris Bosch went down with his tragic season ending. You know what I'm saying? Or career ending hearts or heart stuff so for someone like d wade like he's solidified right up there with the tim duncans the dirk nowitzkis and all that the kobe's of the world or he is you know what i'm saying the face of that entire organization and there's pretty yeah. much nothing that can be done about that i don't think people he realize even does back-end what? work bro till this day he's the reason why jimmy Butler is fucking there <laughs> yeah his influence continues but i don't think people realize just how fucking ridiculous it is to win a championship in your third year like uh, imagine if two years Anthony ago Edwards. when not yeah that's, that route. that's a good comparison too but imagine yeah. two years ago when luka Doncic pushed the pushed the mavericks to the western conference finals and played curry they got destroyed and the warriors went on to win a championship but imagine if luka had won the championship that year with not a super team around him a decent team but nothing to write home about granted there's a shaquille o'neal there on the other side so it makes it a little bit different but just imagine the timeline Luca was on two years ago, blossoming into a superstar, has really come into his own, but there's still questions about, is he on the level of the other top guys? You got to see him do it first. And then he just does it, his first chance to make a run. That's crazy. You just don't see that shit anymore, bro. You don't see You've that shit You've never seen it. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's not anymore. That's never been normal. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Has there, has there been anybody else that's done that? That's led a team championship in their first four years? I'm saying Magic Johnson, uh, but of course yeah, it's Magic. Magic Johnson. Yeah, well, he had Kareem. It's a little different. <laughs> Larry? You know what I mean? Larry did it? Okay. Yeah, okay, Larry. Larry's, Larry's the so, other one. So that's Larry, fucking so great company. That's what I'm saying. If you, are, if you are one of the five best players of all time, <laughs> and Dwayne Wade, you are leading your team. <laughs> and that listen, that, that sounds like a shot, but it is what it is. But like, you are leading your team to a championship as soon as, as you think. As soon yeah, as you when did Kareem win his in uh, Milwaukee? Maybe maybe a little early. Yeah, maybe him too. But he was also 22 years old in the Canada League, which I think yeah. maybe was older too. Yeah. But yeah, it's Kareem, Bird, and like even LeBron didn't do it. LeBron got there year four, but he yeah. lost. He got swept. That's a big difference. Yeah, yeah exactly, man. Shout out, man. I was going to throw Patrick McCall into this conversation to troll, but it's too serious. <laughs> <laughs> no NBA player has ever won three straight like in the fashion that he has, bro. Back to back with the McCall. Warriors, then with the Raptors, generational talent. Listen, Thanks. Taylor Horton Tucker won a championship on his rookie contract. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> all, right. all right, next team. <laughs> <laughs> next team we got, who is the greatest player in the Washington Wizards history? This is kind of gross. This is, this this is, is a gross. tough one. Um, um, are we going with like, mine goes to John Unsell? Wall. Yeah, I was going to say Wes Unsell is probably actually yeah. the goat there. I, I know Elvin Hayes has a good resume from back in the day. Earl Monroe. Uh Man, after that, like this is <laughs> a franchise of stinkers. Yeah. yeah, this is not a very decorated franchise. Oh and man! I guess okay. Wes Unsell's the answer. He was, okay. I believe, the youngest MVP ever. Am I right by that? He might have been before Derek. Yeah, yeah. He won the MVP in 1969, which was his first year in the league. He was 22 years old. That's what it is. He won as a rookie. That's that's great. Okay, yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah, MVP is a rookie, which is so funny looking back because he averaged 13 points and 18 rebounds. Just a very <laughs> insane stat line. That's like can't Andre to numbers. 1969. Yeah, <laughs> it's 1969 basketball where they had a million yeah. possessions. So yeah. 18 rebounds is ridiculous to think about today. Yeah, who who were the runner ups? Because 13 and 18. What an, what an MVP stat line. <laughs> Uh, bro, I'm getting bored of this. Just hang <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Like they don't, they don't have that success like that. And even as much as we love John Wall, they never made it to a conference finals. Yeah, and yeah, and he's just John Wall in the, the day. He's not like. Listen, I don't even know if John Wall ranks higher than Donovan. Mitchell I mean, all time. one of the greatest, <laughs> one of the greatest things of John Wall, John Wall's career is That's being the second best player in the East. I'd rather conference talk about that than who the Wizards code is. <laughs> yeah, like right, uh, the, the, the all time, John Wall or Donovan Mitchell? God, John Wall oh had five God. All-Star seasons in a row. 
Don't, His best season ugh. was 23 points and 10 assists. Where are we taking? The, the, that or <laughs> last year's Donovan Mitchell? Who are you taking? Quick, last you're on the year's Donovan come on, Mitchell's come on, elite, bro. Yeah, go ahead and give me John Wall, though. Donovan Mitchell ain't throwing <laughs> no gang signs. Donovan Mitchell's not hitting the fucking <laughs> Dougie during the dunk contest, bro. <laughs> he ain't doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> what a debate. But yeah, I guess it's got to be West Unsold. It's yeah. another one of those. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Respect the goats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have never. I have never seen West Unsell play. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my damn life, bro. Thirteen points and eighteen rebounds. Fucking Those stats are disgusting. God. Yeah, never seen him play. Damn play life. at that point. Let's go. Shout out to right, him. Next though. team. Who is the greatest player in Cavs history? Another one with the Bulls. Obviously, it's LeBron. Who's number two though? Do people want to say Kyrie Irving or... Oh, no, no, not Kyrie. My bad. No, no, no. Kyrie's not there. Larry he's, Nance? He's more top five. No, it's probably like... Um, which, Mark which Price? No, nah, uh, Brad. Brad Daughtery? Yeah. Oh. Is he over Larry Nance? Are they? I'm pretty sure he was like that. Am I getting them mixed up? Yeah, you might be. I think Larry Nance was the guy during those... Days. Larry Nance is a three-time All-Star, three-time All-Defensive. What's Look, at, he has the weirdest resume. What's he made. <laughs> he made... The All Star team in his fourth year, nineteen eighty five. His next one wasn't until nineteen eighty nine, and his next one wasn't until nineteen ninety three. Every four years, Larry Nance was an All Star. <laughs> no, the hell is, was going on? Well, well, no. So Brad, Brad played his whole career in Cleveland. He's a five time All Star. Yeah, you're made, right. You're made right. all made made an All NBA team. Made All Rookie. Nineteen, nineteen and and ten for his career. Pretty solid. Yeah, he might yeah. be number two. Another one of these teams with. Not a lot going for them outside of the greatest player. <laughs> Listen, also, first overall pick from, from yeah. the Cavs. So, yeah, it's probably Brad. Damn, Kyrie might be third. <laughs> More like Kyrie or Mike Price. Larry Kyrie's Nance not a bad five. third, man. Kyrie's not a bad third. <laughs> yeah, he just wasn't there that long. It so, where does Mo Williams come into play on this list? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> you know? How many all-stars do the Cavs have in team history? That's a good question. Can't be a ton, and if that's the case, right. however, LeBron, <laughs> however many LeBron has, we'll add fifteen to that number, <laughs> and then that, fifteen's a be lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the Cavs, the Cavs aren't the most interesting team on this list, but hey, they got LeBron, so they have one of the best goats, probably the, the best yeah. goat, obviously. Next team, interesting debate. We know the answer, but it might soon change in the coming years. Maybe, probably not. Who is the greatest player in Milwaukee Bucks history? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, th- probably. I actually think it's, it's Giannis. Oh, you think it's Giannis already? Wow. I actually do think think it's Giannis already. Okay, so the easy answer is obviously Kareem, third best player of all time, won in their championship early in his career. But the debate. I love how you say it so definitively. Donovan, talk your well, shit. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm, I'm going passing it off to him because the answer has always been Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's obviously one of the greatest yeah. players of all time. But now. Giannis is going to be there just as long. He's going to pass him up on longevity. And he also has the chip he brought to the city. So now it becomes a debate. So why do you think Giannis already passed him up? I think that with Kareem, Kareem is looked at as a Laker. And I you think, think so? okay. I, I do. And I think that he has the stamp from Los Angeles. And not to say that like, that he like doesn't have, you know, the bucks in him, but for Giannis to be drafted there and for that, you know, we're talking about these homegrown stars who are doing all these things. And for the Bucks to see the progression of Giannis throughout his entire career to go from somebody who absolutely nobody knew to a back-to-back league MVP. And he wins, you know, he wins finals MVP. He brings them the chip after 50, you know, plus years and does all the, does all these things. He's probably going to lead the franchise in all these categories moving forward. I think that Giannis is just more synonymous with with Milwaukee and Kareem. He's very important, but it's also another thing where Kareem is so great that when you talk about him, it's more an all time status. And he did spend a majority of his career and get a majority of his rings with the Lakers. And so yeah, Giannis, only six years Giannis, the Bucks. That's what I'm saying. Giannis yeah. is doing everything here in Milwaukee with them. So that's why I'm giving yeah. him the nod. Yeah, the thing about Kareem is like he was, I think he was genuinely just the greater talent. He was able to do 
just as much or more than Giannis in such a shorter amount of time. Giannis has been with the Bucks like 10 years compared to what you said, Isaac Kareem, six years. And yep. Giannis, I mean, Kareem has like 14K some points. Giannis, I think he has 15 or 16 or something like that. Um, they, Giannis has been a defensive player of the year, two-time MVP, I think, MIP and all that. Uh, winning a championship for the first time in 50 years carries a lot of fucking weight. And the fact that, no, so you know what I'm saying? You're right. One. You are, you are right, but, but things that can drought, change. But snapping, snapping the drought yeah. is is different. After after fifty years of pain, <laughs> and and everyone's like, oh my gosh, like we're never gonna get it done. You're the one to bring them back. I think that's that that helps. Yeah, yeah. And Giannis is at seven All Star seasons there. First one, he wasn't one of the best players in the league yet. So really, he's at six years as one of the best players in the league from 2018 through now, which is the exact same amount as Kareem. Two MVPs. Did Kareem have two or three with the Bucks MVPs? I can't remember. I, I can't Not sure. remember either. If it was six, I don't remember exactly how many came with the Bucks, but he was a multiple time MVP with the Bucks too. Bull have a ring. That makes me think that right now, since all things are pretty three much time equal, MVP with the Bucks. With the Bucks, yeah. I kind of want to lean towards a better player, which at this point is Kareem. His peak is thirty year average, thirty five points per game in the seventies. That's kind of crazy. So. Maybe in like five years, once Giannis maybe wins another MVP, maybe another ring, we'll see. And he has like 12 years of being a star there. Then I think I'll go Giannis. But right now with everything equal, I kind of want to lean the better player. Nah, I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. I just think that, I think that seeing the the progression and the narrative and the journey that you go on with a player means a lot for a franchise it means a lot for its fans and so again this is very heavily narrative based the the case <laughs> that, that I'm making for Giannis but seeing him go from from what he was into into what he is now and the chip that he won came with Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday as the second best player it's not like he had an Oscar Robertson next to him True. And he yeah. scored 50 in a game six. Like, yeah, that was nuts, man. Like the closeout stuff that yeah. he he had all of the moments in that finals that's like, that's going to play on the highlight reel for that franchise forever. Like, I and I, I honestly don't know which one is more impressive. Giannis being a bad free throw shooter and going like 16 of 17 Seven. from the free throw yeah. line or that game four block because both of those were just insane to think about. Yeah, that was definitely one of the stronger individual performances in the finals over the last couple of decades. Off of a hyper extended knee. <laughs> that's so crazy, bro. Come on. Now. Yeah, that's so crazy, bro. Yeah, he came it's back so fast and just just as fe- as effective as a player. So, yeah, I think that when it comes to it, I don't know. I, I want to lean. I want to lean Kareem. But with Giannis narrative, going back to the narrative based thing. Giannis has so much shit documented in so many stories. Dude came into the country, tried smoothies. It was the greatest thing of all time. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like God bless America. Seeing like seeing this tried skinny smoothies. dude from yeah, bro. Seeing this skinny dude from Greece. That's how we decide. Be raised in these. Yeah, smoothies. That's how we do it over here. Welcome to DD3. <laughs> so Kareem, K- Kareem never went through a drive through like Giannis. No, he had why. a smoothie the day he was born. It's just a different levels. Like he was born to the smoothie life. Yeah, Giannis I think at, at the end of the at the end of these two players' career, I think it also just matters who will the what will they be re- remembered more as. And I know Kareem more so veered towards the Lakers, and Giannis is Mister Buck. He's Mister Milwaukee unless he fucking leaves and <laughs> all that other shit. We but. give Kareem, we knock him for being more of a Laker, but when we yeah. talk about the Lakers, we don't even consider him, even though he's the best player that's ever been there. And for that, oh, I guess you can say LeBron, but for an extended period of time, we don't even consider him as a He's Laker. He's such an for some interesting reason. player to talk about, bro. He's such no, an interesting mean, player. We- no, that's Why not. Isn't I mean, he that's, than Kobe? that's that's not. True. He just never gets brought up in those conversations because he's not Magic and he's not Kobe when it comes to like being a Laker. But like, why not? If he's not, if he's not a Buck and he is a Laker, why can't he be them as a Laker? Because he's not them as a Laker. <laughs> why not? You see what I'm saying? Because they yeah, draft, they drafted Magic. They drafted Kobe. They didn't draft Kareem. Okay. So like, while we still love you, we don't love you like that, right? We didn't see you grow up like that. You again, you already had a ring and three MVPs whenever you came to us. So Magic, his first year in the league, he got a he got us a ring. 
Kobe, we saw Kobe's uh, evolution. So it's just, it's a different type of, of love that they have for him. Okay. If drafting them is a difference, I can, I guess I get it. Yeah, bro. All right. We move on to the next team. We have four of them left. And I wish I closed out on a stronger note because three of the next four are not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the greatest player in Orlando Magic history? I, I'm putting my vote in for Dwight Howard. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. So the obvious it's, answer people will go to is Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you go Dwight Howard over Shaq? Well, first off, Mo, what do you think? I was leaning more towards Shaq first and foremost, but these two, Dwight did go ahead and lead them to a finals run and all that. And he was the best player and like one of the best systems at that point in time in history. So did Shaq though. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right about that. But I think Shaq's run over there was like OD short. It was OD short. And so. Yeah, it was very short. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know how much you can really claim that. Dwight was there for eight years. Shaq was there for four years. So Dwight yeah. is long. They both yeah. made one finals. Dwight had three uh, defense player of the years there. Did I don't think Shaq never won an MVP there. His only MVP came with the Lakers. Uh, two-time scoring champ, which one of them came there. So one scoring champ versus three defense player of the years. Both made a finals run. Twice as many years for Dwight, but Shaq, four years, he was clearly the better player. So how do you weigh that? Dwight constantly gets disrespected as a player too, bro. And it's just like, I think he honestly probably deserves it. It probably is Dwight. He's he, Is he top 75 <laughs> all time? He's not, right? Is he what? He's not top 75 all time, right? No, he like didn't get voted there. He should have been, but it's because they yeah. grandfathered in some of the old farts who were there on the first list. Realistically, Dwight definitely is. Let's go ahead and give Dwight his respect. I'm leaning towards Dwight. He okay. doubled it. He doubled it. I don't understand why. Like, I don't I don't think that is that close in this sense. He doubled him up in, in years. And three-time DPOY. There's like three guys in the history of the yeah. league that's ever done that. And Dwight is one of them. And if we're being real petty... Listen, I know everybody lost in the finals. At least Dwight got a game. Shaq got swept. So <laughs> if, we're, if we're being tic tac uh, like that. This always makes me laugh. I lost a little bit better. All right, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Neither the team stood a fucking chance. I don't even care. I lost a little bit better. <laughs> but I see your point. If it comes down to the twice as long, I, I can understand it. I, I just hesitate a little bit because the peak of Shaq and Orlando is just so much better of a player. Like it's night and day. He's way fucking better than the best version Dwight ever was. So that makes like I think that matters in the day. Like we do a lot of resume it stuff. Yeah. You know, okay. Who the best player absolutely matters. You can't say it doesn't matter. Not when one was there for literally twice as long and has and has accomplishments that that the other one never had. Like as great yeah. and as great and as dominant cool as as Shaq was, three three DPOYs mean something for that for that city and for that franchise. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I'm, good. I'm, I'm cool with it. The, I can't argue with just longevity. Four years is not a long amount of time. There's other players that we talked about that weren't there very long with their teams. Like, we didn't give Barkley the Suns because he wasn't there very long. So, it's similar. I, I can understand that. Shout out Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard gets, res gets his respect finally. <laughs> it pains me to do it. I'm always the one arguing against him just because I feel like he gets catapulted into certain conversations. But, all right. Next team... Who is the greatest piston of all time? Isaiah it's Thomas. Guy. It's Do my guy, thing. Isaiah Thomas. Go we've ahead. All, we've already one. discussed. Go this. ahead and dance on it, Donovan. We've already <laughs> discussed the number one Isaiah Thomas fan under forty years old in the country. He's <laughs> like that, and y'all just don't understand. Again, the only person, the only player to to beat Magic and Larry and Jordan. It's him. Like he is at the <laughs> he's he's at the center of all of it. And I think for him to to also be like the face of you know this bad boy piston era, and obviously like Lambeer is the one who the, who everybody says is dirty and Sally and and Aguirre and they were nice and Joe Dumars is like the silent killer. Everybody knows that everything that the Pistons did in that entire era started and stopped with Isaiah Thomas. And he is, he was there his entire career. He is fantastic. He still is an ambassador for, for the Pistons. And he's always, you know, repping for, for Detroit. They, he's just, he's not replaceable for that, for that franchise. And he's just, 
He's amazing. Okay. I like that. I respect it. I mean, I don't even know there's a close second when it comes to this team. I Yeah, who would be second? Is it Ben Wallace? Sure. I don't, know. I don't know. I'm just saying names. There's probably like Joe Dumars or something. And in that case, we're talking about the guy that. who's second fiddle. <laughs> like, this is probably the most clear cut one besides like Jordan and LeBron. It's yeah. obviously Isaiah. Like you said, they've had one era of, well, let me say, they have two great eras, two championship teams. One era that was like truly one of the greatest dynasties of all time. Well, not I'll say dynasty is too generous, but one of the best championship runs of their time. And he's the guy that led it. Like, it's pretty fucking simple. Yeah. I'm going to You're right. Shout, shout out Isaiah. <laughs> all right, next one. Who was the greatest Raptor of all time? Uh, it's, it, I can go ahead and just go start ahead. this off. It's 110% Kyle Lowry. Um, he wasn't homegrown necessarily because he wasn't drafted there. But even within that, I still say he's homegrown because he grew up and turned into the Kyle Lowry that we all know. Um, he went ahead and got his ass bounced consistently by LeBron and the Cavs on a fucking seasonly basis no matter how good they were in the regular season <laughs> they're consistently just getting <laughs> whooped but within that they go ahead make a change besides jury trades for um Kawhi Leonard and they make that they finally go get over the hump and Kyle Lowry did his absolute thing and he played uh, he had a, a lot of a whole lot of out of body experiences he became an all-star there a lot of. you know what I'm saying <laughs> so I think yeah, you know, even though I generally don't think he's the most talented player in Raptors history, I'm fucking leaning towards maybe DeMar DeRozan and, and Kawhi Leonard. But as the staple, someone who helped build that house, I'm going to lean towards Kyle Lowry. Others may say Vince Carter. He deserves to be a part of that conversation, even though a lot of Toronto Raptors fans have like a sour taste in their mouth. Pause about no, him, he doesn't. But, Vince I Carter mean, left in the most dramatic fashion. I think like, it was great. He, we we that shit on like we took KD out of the conversation because he left in dramatic fashion. Vince Carter left on shitty terms too, and he's nowhere near the caliber of player. Like I don't know how you could possibly put Vince Carter in the conversation. He deserves to be in the. In I the, think I think in, Vince, in the atmosphere of the conversation. Yeah, I think I think Vince is on the short list of greatest Raptors of all time. Yeah, sure, but when you compare him to like like Mo said, someone like Kyle Lowry who embodies a team and was through thick and thin, emphasizing the thick. He was always there. He <laughs> very much was like the identity of that team for a decade. And then a guy who left unceremoniously, like it's how could you possibly not go to the guy who is the you most can't deny his greatness. Okay. I'm also going Kyle Lowry because and I re- I wanted so badly to <laughs> make to make the argument for Vince Carter. The problem is he only made the playoffs twice while he was there. And so it's like th- that success wasn't there. I try to make it for Chris Bosh. Again, only two playoff appearances while he was there. And Lowry just had, Lowry was a part of teams that had success with, with the Raptors. The revisionist history on Kyle Lowry is insane. What? It is absolutely ridiculous what we have done with Kyle Lowry and to act like Kyle Lowry. Kyle, We're going to argue. Let's go. Let's go. Let's let's go. Kyle, Kyle Lowry, until Kawhi came in and showed everybody in that city how to actually be a winner, Kyle Lowry was one of the biggest chokers that that franchise ever had. It was him and De, it was him and DeMar DeRozan. And whether listen, they were never going to like win a championship or beat LeBron, but the way that they the way that they just kept losing, even to people like Brooklyn Paul Pierce that they were losing to and people like that. They were out here stinking it up in the biggest moments. And Kyle Lowry had three very, very solid seasons from from 2019 afterwards. And everybody just kind of forgot that for years he was choking in the playoffs and they could not count on him. And he was like, he was a good player, but he was never like amazing. And so obviously, like, yeah. obviously. But the thing is, you say if it wasn't until Kawhi came, they won a chip. Well, too bad we live in reality and they fucking won the chip. And he was on the team and he was a driving part of the team. And they only trade for Kawhi if they feel like they have a team that can be competitive around him. And the reason they felt that way is because they had Kyle Lowry. And they were willing to get rid of DeMar because they knew that Lowry was the real important player on the team. And that pairing him with Kawhi would give them that ceiling. Obviously, he's not as good as a star of someone like uh, of like Kawhi Leonard or even Vince Carter, but that's not the point. That's not what makes him great. It was it was like everything Mo said, which was what he did for the team, and that he was the guy that really gave them their identity as a team. 
and then was there when they won the chip. If if yeah. he was the one that got traded and DeRozan was the one that won, then maybe he'd be that guy. But that's not what happened. You know, Kyle Lowry. They on that realized. Team. They realized, and it wasn't like, oh, we have like a solid team. They realized, hey, we have two chokers as our best players. <laughs> One of them has to go, and we need to get somebody in here who can make a shot when there's 10 seconds or less on the on the clock. And the whole league thinks that DeMar DeRozan is better than Kyle Lowry, so we can get more for for DeMar DeRozan. Let's go get let's go get Kawhi Leonard, and we'll keep the other choker because guess what? The ball's not going to be in his hands. I think that for Kyle Lowry, he he has solidified his um his like Raptor airness or whatever in the years after Kawhi. I think those years have done more for him and his Raptor legacy than anything he did before, even winning a championship with them. Because I think that that is very singularly Kawhi Leonard and Fred Van Vliet and the player that he turned into after he had his <laughs> child, right? Those two things were crazy. But Kyle Lowry, like we don't have to act like Kyle Lowry was this amazing player this entire time. It's, no I mean, that. it gives it's more no than that. it's. You're looking at it as black and white when it's is a this is a beautiful ass portrait. What do you mean black and white? I'm not, I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying it's, it's black and white. I just gave him the nod as the greatest raptor of all time. I think it's more indicative of the fact that they don't really have anybody to to be as their goat. And if Kyle Lowry is the greatest player in your franchise's history, then like that speaks volumes. No one disagrees but, like, though. You act like we're saying that like it's an impressive goat. It's not. No, yeah. I just had to get this off. I just had to get this off. I felt. <laughs> this way for a it's long time in. you and i have had conversations where i've heard people talk about kyle lowry making the hall of fame and it blows my mind it really <laughs> really does make me upset and so this was my chance <laughs> to get my kyle lowry stuff off so that's the only reason why i feel he he's it's just like he's the go right. i just had to say like, it. everybody I mean, agrees yeah i mean i ain't going nobody to bat talks for about it kyle though. lowry like, bro, come on. Like, like, kyle lowry? Why would they? <laughs> who the hell is a kyle lowry saying bro who are you trying to go? Who, who are you looking for to have this argument with, Donovan? I know someone in this comments is teed off with you, and listen, they're gonna send you, you know a nasty DM you know after this podcast. Listen, listen. <laughs> if there is one have thing, this argument. if that, and I don't, I don't know when it is. <laughs> listen. I don't know. I don't know exactly when it happened. And this is this is when I figured stuff out. This is when this is really when, when I figured out like how the world works, right? <laughs> because Kyle Lowry, <laughs> listen. Somebody goes on online. They go on Instagram, and you see somebody thinking, you're just like, "Oh my god, they're great." And, and people look at Kyle Lowry, they feel the same way. And it's just like, "Yo," for some reason, everybody's just like, "Yo, Kyle Lowry is the best." <laughs> like, like he, he won a chip. <laughs> He's thinking all this. I know, like this man let a couple so stand accounts get to his head, bro. <laughs> he said he figured out life after this, bro. Listen, oh my god! You Kyle Lowry I, figured, I, figured you figured out, out I figured it out. I figured it out. You are he listen. If you are thick, people will listen to you and people will like you if you're thick. That's Whoa. all you have to do. And that's, that's why I figured out life. about Kyle Lowry because there's no reason why we should be looking at this five-time All Star and thinking like, oh my God, he belongs in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Yo, people just people just like to make fun of him and Bro. like and like to just be like, oh are wow, you like that's crazy. Kyle Lowry has sex appeal, so people <laughs> like him. <laughs> listen, are you I don't know what him people are. Spice? I don't know what people are on. But that's that's what I figured out. That's why I figured oh out. Oh my god. Are you cool? Wow. Oh my god. Wow. Listen, listen. That was quite the take. Kyle Lowry might be in the Hall of Fame tomorrow if you put him on a Sports Illustrated cover. Like <laughs> What the hell is going <laughs> like, on? Whoa. Well, are you are, are, Well, do you remember that Isaiah <laughs> Thomas and I think D Wade did it too. Yo, Hulk like, Cheeks was out in that in that on magazine. The body issue? Yes, I made me so uncomfortable. That's all that's the all world would end if Kyle Lowry did one of those. <laughs> Man, let's move on. <laughs> we talked about Paul George and his likability. This is the same thing with, with Kyle Lowry. Bro, he's literally he takes a lot of charges. Like, what, what what can you not like about the man? That's lame whenever he does it. He took a charge in an all-star game. That's Why Kyle Lowry. Like that? that right there is the epitome of what rat that's, that's Raptors culture he built. That's that, lame. Bro. You shouldn't even be on the floor. <laughs> well, it's I an understand. all-star game. You're taking a charge <laughs> like you're some white boy at Duke. What are you doing? <laughs> Get off the floor. This is for real. Real hoopers, man. What we have if to understand. If y'all are still here, if you're still here an hour into the podcast, comment, Kyle Lowry is thick. I want to see it in the comments. With two C's. 
With two C's. <laughs> two C's. He said he wanted double, double C's, C's on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Man. Say Kyle oh. Lowry is cheeked up. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to on Kyle Thursday Lowry. Thursday afternoon. We got one more team. Enough of Kyle Lowry's thickness. Who is the greatest Nick of all time? Oh, man. We did a video about this earlier, and I said Patrick Ewing. I kind of want to go Walt Frazier now just because he has the, the chips. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to go Walt Frazier. Okay. I don't care. Yeah. Okay, it's <laughs> I'm fine. not going to bat with anything. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It's fine. Can we like, go to TikTok time? <laughs> yeah, I get, yeah, I mean, Ewing and Frazier is just like... Yeah, I guess the chips decide it. Like, he Ewing two. is such a... He's a star... That was notable in his era, but never one of the best players alive. Like, if, if I'm trying to think of a comparison to today's league, like, I don't know, Paul George? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't even know. It's, it's just yeah, such like, a weird, it's just such a weird, weird conversation, especially because when we talk about, like, the all-time centers, like, there's, like, seven before you get to Ewing. And so... There might be more. Okay, okay, here's something like, fun to do and talk about the Knicks. Let's do it. Kareem, Shaq, Hakeem, Wilt, Bill, Bill uh, Jokic, D- Robinson. Jokic, David Robinson. I feel like we're forgetting somebody. No, I think Moses, sh- Moses Malone throwing... over him. Yeah, yeah, you can put Moses over him. Moses um, I don't even think I had Ewing in my top 30, or maybe he was number 30. Yeah, he's one He's one of the first cuts. So he's either... So what? So I guess he's either like 9 or 10. I, We're at 8 so far, yeah. Okay, like that's that's fine. I just think that for these franchises, while Frazier also still calls Knicks games, like he's very much a, a Nick for life. True. He has, he has, the, true. The, two, he has the, the two chips. I, I'll give it to Walt. I'll give it to Walt. Yeah, I'm cool with that. He's... Honestly, like last time, I think I agree with you, Ewing, because I was like, he's a better player. I didn't really think about it. It was a TikTok. We're going fast. I think Frazier might just be the better player, too, like for his time. Right. Like, I, it's hard because maybe Ewing's a better player because, like, the eras are different and better competition. But in terms of their standing in the league in the moment, there's probably way more of an argument for Walt as one of the best players in the league as there, more than there was for Ewing. Like, you, you never could have said that. Yeah. I, it's, a, it's a weird dynamic. Just because, like, Walt, Walt played at, like, the tail end of that era where we're just like, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm going to give him the respect on this one. Okay. I do not care about Nick's history. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are going to be like, what about Melo? You want to explain why Melo's not in the conversation? There just wasn't enough winning. Um, but, like, listen, as a moment, and if we're talking even, like, top five, I think I do think that Carmelo has an argument to be one of like the top five Knicks. One of one of that's very fair to say. That's very fair like, to say that it's just for everything that Knicks fans want and everything that people think that like the Knicks should be and this should be this place where stars want want to come. Carmelo Anthony was the first player in a long time, maybe even ever, who said, "I like at basically you know in their prime at the peak of their powers, I want to go to New York," and he forced yeah. his way over there, and so. This idea that a star would leave a good situation to go and try to build something in New York, he ingratiated himself with that entire fan base. And so, like, I, I will love Carmelo Anthony forever, but he just didn't have great success. I mean, they had they had one, I think, one playoff series win that yeah, entire yeah, run. Yeah. So. And it's it's just, no it fault to his own, bro. Win. Yeah, exactly. And that's not. I mean, he wasn't the greatest player. I mean, he was a great player, but not the greatest player. And a lot of people have a lot of conversations about Carmelo Anthony. But at the same time, influence was there, but he never had that on the court. Success was playing yeah. with guys like Raymond Felton and Andrea Bargnani and Jose Calderon. It's like, let's be for real, bro. There's nothing to be done, especially with the style of basketball that he was playing back then and who, who, who he had to go up against being the Chicago Bulls, and Miami Heat and all those other teams. He wasn't just set up. He just wasn't set up to win, but he didn't mean a lot in that era because I know like New York fans have been in the slums, bro. Starving. Yeah, they're in the gutter yeah. for a while before him. he saved them a little bit. Yeah. All right, man. We all agree, Walter Fra- Walter Frazier, Clyde. I think. I think it's TikTok time. Is it TikTok time? It might be. <sighs> okay. It <laughs> is TikTok <laughs> time. Let's, Let's do go. this. As always, we're gonna start with the draft. You know. 
TD3 signature. We're going to do this like always. And today we're going to draft players that wore number 23 on their jersey. We get the two best players of all time and then a quick fall off. Let's do this, man. I'm interested to see what type of names you pull out the hat because it's steep, bro. <laughs> yeah. So this time the order is me first, Mo second, Donovan third. Sorry to do it to you, Donovan. You don't get one of the goats. <laughs> You're Isaac, not going to win. You're going to piss My a guy, lot of people off, Isaac. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Donovan already lost it. Yeah, already lost. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Listen, maybe you'll pull it out. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. the hell? <laughs> Yo. Check that yourself. That was wild. <laughs> so let's draft NBA lineups with only players who wore number 23. First pick, as always, I'm going LeBron James, but I'm putting him in my point guard. Okay. okay. Nice. Interesting. The roster okay. construction. I see. Yeah, nice. yeah. I gotta, gotta be. You trying to tell me? Le- you trying to tell me LeBron's the greatest player of all time? Mm. Go ahead and give me Jordan. Naturally, I'll be content. Okay. Should have picked Jason Richardson. <laughs> you sleep on him, man. You act like Listen. he's trash. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have an opinion on Jason Richardson. I Listen, just when, we, the- <laughs> when we do these, <laughs> listen in that specific draft. He was not one of the 15 best players that you could have taken. So it's like, <laughs> bro, he was what he was the of, best fit. God, <laughs> I guess. I suppose. <laughs> okay. Anyways, with my first pick, give me Anthony Davis. Fuck, I was hoping he somehow fell to me next. No, 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 no. He was never making it back. And then <laughs> at my three, give me Jimmy Butler. Yep. <sighs> Solid start. You don't get one of the goats, but that's not bad. You did great. You did great. Okay. Thank you. So. At my four, go ahead and give me... Actually, at my three, give me Alex English. Whew. Okay. Glad you didn't pick who I thought you were going to pick. At my Dude, five, give me Draymond Green. Yep. The nice. one there. Got the best passage of the one and the five possible. And then... At my four, give me Blake Griffin. Oh, my God. That's who I really, really wanted. That's what I wanted to go to, bro. Fuck. You should have won <laughs> nah, I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I couldn't leave Alice Inglis on the board, bro. That would have been dumb. Nah, I would have took him if you didn't take him. It was a good pick. Yeah. Okay. So that leaves me. This, this is this is where it gets bleak. This is where it gets bleak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's uh, all the all time greats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I got Who's MJ Cam Johnson. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so I got MJ, and then I have Alice Ingl- Alex English. So I need a fucking four and a five and a one, bro. At my one, this sounds so nasty and weird to say. He's going to do it. <sighs> yeah. Actually, screw that. At my four, give me run our test. No! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You should have shut your mouth. As soon as you told me you said it, that ignited a demon in me. God, let's go. <laughs> you deserve that. <laughs> I'm hurt. I'm so hurt. I was. Ah! <laughs> no, I'm actually frustrated now. Yeah, um, I don't know what to do. That's I'm in your head tough. right now. <laughs> All right, at my five, give me Marcus Camby. Um, <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Draymond's locking him up. Easy. <laughs> that's such a. Uh, he's not. Um, he's defeated. He's he's really not. And then I guess at my one, Mo, I I hate you. I I really <laughs> do. At my one, give me Mitch Richmond. Okay. Okay. No playmaking nice. at the one, but shooter. I like it. Jimmy Jimmy can be a pseudo point. I like it. <laughs> uh, dude, the big list here is so fucking gross. It's so <laughs> gross. But I hate yeah, to say it. Up. The talent is undeniable. But give me Mitchell Robinson. Oh, my <laughs> God. I hate to say it, but I need him, bro, on my team. I Hell. hate to say it. He's a good fit. He's a great fit. I don't need you to do shit. But block They're shots putting and him rebounds. in a torture rack. <laughs> Mental straight jacket. <laughs> oh man, no. <laughs> All right, my turn. So I have LeBron at the one, then I have my four and my five. Ooh, so I can finish up here. Don't do it. Okay. At my three, I need spacing. Give me Lowry Markin in. Okay. He wears twenty three right now? Or was yep, that his? He wears twenty three right now in, in the jazz. Wow. Let me confirm that because I, I looked that up on a list of people that wear twenty three. So let me make sure I'm not tripping, and he actually does, and he does. Ah, nice pull. Great. (laughs) 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 We're going to get LeBron the two, 
Wait, who do I? Okay, so he's my three. I need a two. Hmm. I was going to pick Rich Richmond if you didn't pick him. You know what? Let me throw back to someone Mo took last week. Give me Jason Richardson at the two. And That's I ain't hard. finna slander you. That's a great pick. He was a highlight reel, and also he had a ratchet on him. Good pick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, man. For spacing reasons, go ahead and give me Lou Williams at my one, man. LeBron's posting Lemon, up every play. Peppa, Lou. It don't matter, bro. It don't matter, Abuse. bro. Your, your team cannot match up with mine. Your five is not greater than mine. <laughs> and I got Jordan. <laughs> I guess. All right. I might two for my last pick. Give me J.R. Smith. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's who you were saying don't do it for? <laughs> I, I needed shooting. So. J.R. Smith? <laughs> All right. So. You, you could have gotten Kevin Martin. You could have got Fred Van Vliet. Yeah, you're in the dungeon right now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, we're not. Stop it. Stop. Okay, listen. <laughs> what we're not going to do is sit here, and every single time, we're going to disrespect my last pick. Okay, J.R. Smith <laughs> is a very solid NBA player who's contributed a lot to winning. He's a There's good shooter. There's all-stars on the board. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good shooter. Great vibes guy. I have Mitch Richmond, Jimmy Butler. Bro. Here. J.R. Smith is going to be Fine. And he's gonna be okay. <laughs> great vibes because he's off of the gas 90 percent of the time, bro. Like I Ask understand anybody it, who's ever played with J.R. Smith, they love playing him. Team morale just got boosted by fifteen because I made that pick. <laughs> and chemistry, you lost the game by twenty. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you drafted Lou Will and Mitchell Robinson. That that, that one five pick and roll is not doing anything for you. Listen, okay. Lou leaning to the left, you ain't stopping that, boy. You think Lou Will over Fred Van Vliet and Calvin Murphy? <laughs> I need this. I, look, I need Lou for the spacing. And after we whoop all your teams' ass, we gonna we Lou gonna take him out for some winks. That's the game plan. <laughs> all right, so I got LeBron James, Jason Richardson, Lowry Markkinen, Blake Griffin, Draymond Green. That's the best five. I ain't gonna lie, that number one overall pick saved your ass. I like. It. <laughs> I got no, Lou. I, I just didn't pick Lou Williams. <laughs> you had, you had Michael Jordan. What do you mean it saved him? You, you also just, had I a just chance. Didn't pick Lou Williams. No, bro. He had he had Blake Blake Griffin is what really saved him. That Blake and Draymond combo you combo was Blake. deadly. You sold. <laughs> I couldn't have taken Blake because Alex Ingles was a better pick. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. What's your team? Anyways, Lou will MJ Alex Ingles Ron Artest and Mitchell Robinson. My team is actually great. <laughs> It would be great if you didn't have fucking Lou Williams as your point guard. Uh, notably, not a point guard. The greatest <laughs> version of the greatest version, Lou Williams, Lou Williams is busting your ass, bro. I also, guess. again, not a point guard. Like, <laughs> listen, it does. great pro am team. You got that. <laughs> All right, my team. I have Mitch Richmond, J.R. Smith, Jimmy Butler, Anthony Davis, and Marcus Canby. Listen, my, listen my bad. I didn't get one of the two best players of all time. <laughs> I was set up to fail, and I think that I did a pretty good job considering the circumstances. You know I what? think you might beat Mo, honestly. Oh, you're chirping. Now, now, you're, now you're chirping. Now you're chirping. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. Let's be real. <laughs> listen, he has AD and Jimmy Butler. Who's your second best player? Oh, Alex, Alex English. What the hell? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Why are we disrespecting him? Like, he's a bum. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I've never went to bed for Alice English in my life, bro. Shit. And now I'm doing it. What has life come to these days? <laughs> All right, man. The next video we're going to do, we're going to do a tier list like usual. This time we're going to put versions of Steph Curry into a tier list. Okay. We did this with LeBron like a month and a two, month or two ago. It's a little bit different with Curry because he doesn't have quite as many like notable eras. But his progression as a player, she's changed a lot over the years. So I think it should be interesting. For sure, bro. So let's put every version of Steph Curry into a tier list. First Where are off, we starting 2011 Curry. That's rookie Curry? And that's not no. rookie, but it's pre, that's pre sophomore. MVP pre, jump. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, oh, okay, sophomore year Curry. Pre superstar jump. Hmm. He was still very good. Uh, I don't think we can go. Actually, no. We'll go this deep. is the worst we'll version of Curry, depending on what else he brings up on this list. Uh, I think he's probably what a D. You know, he he pre superstar jump. He was great for his time. You know, what I'm saying, but the Warriors were not weren't on much. They're still rebuilding as a team, but he did let everyone know like he may be cooking some in the future. 
Yeah, this is before he put it all together with Steve Kerr and realized he can be this off-ball mover that like has insane gravity to make his teammates better. At this point, he was just a good shooter who could really attack people off the dribble and like was like, whoa, I've never seen anything like this. But he wasn't making everybody around him better yet. Yeah, exactly. The yeah, infrastructure wasn't set up. The players were not there just yet. Um, and this is just the prelude to what we wanted to see yeah. or saw later in his illustrious career. So we're going D. D. I right, bet. D is cool. Next up. 2023 Curry, current day. Mm. I'm going A tier because the, I think there's like we've seen peak Curry and this isn't it, but this version is still really, really good. Yeah, so he hasn't I, taken a step back yet, really. But it's like this past season wasn't one of his two or three best seasons, but he's not yeah. washed by any means. Like, so probably still deserves A. Listen, he's still one of the three best players in the world. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, he's A. This is one of his this past season was one of his most ironically enough efficient seasons. Um, but even like with that still being said, I I I can, I can agree with you guys. I don't think it was one of his like I don't think this was Pete Curry so far. Yeah. Next up, 2015 Curry. First MVP. First Damn. Hmm. This can't I, I I don't know. I see I don't want to say this. Yet. I see think that this is B. Yeah, that's I, I worse think, than current. It's better. So that is worse than current day Curry. Yes, I think I think current day Steph Curry is better than he was in his first MVP. I think that first MVP that team went sixty seven and, and fifteen. They were an amazing team. He was leading yeah. the offense. Like that was great. The numbers just still weren't there. And I, but also the defense wasn't there eight years ago the same way that it is right now. I think he's more complete. I think he's smarter. I think he's better. And better ISO score today too. Yeah. That I, is, that I, is, and that I is think the only thing that we're doing is shaving, I think, and only, but it's like we're shaving like two per, two percentage points off of his three-point shot. And I will gladly take that if you're adding everything else. Yeah, his game is just so much more mature now in every way. Like his skills have really polished over time. And th- that wasn't even his best MVP season. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think B is the perfect place for Curry. Yep. Next up, 2016 MVP Curry. S. S. <laughs> S. Isaac, go, go ahead. Please tell the people why this is low-key. One, one of the three best seasons the league has ever seen. It, it low-key is like being like generous. Like this is maybe the best individual season we've ever seen. And that wouldn't even be crazy to say. 406 threes in a single season. That's th- think think ab- think about that. Think about that. You have 82 games. He's making like five threes a night. What he was doing in 2016, the efficiency, he wasn't playing fourth quarters because he was just <clears throat> blowing everybody out. Every week there was a game where he's dropping 30 in a quarter. He was unstoppable in 2016. Yeah, man. Yeah, he was, was 40, 90. He was a scoring leader at 30 points per game while being 67% true shooting percentage, which is as good as like any LeBron, Jordan, Kareem, all those most efficient scorers of all time, as good as them, while being the guy who shoots the ball from the furthest away and has impact on his team with the way he moves off ball and on ball, driving the best offense of all time. Like it's hard to quantify just how incredible of an offensive player this was. Anything less than S would be criminal. Yeah, absolutely. I 110% agree with y'all, bro. He legitimately broke basketball and the entire NBA at that point was just trying to play catch up and they're trying everything. They, they broke. Yeah. Him, Draymond and Clay, of course, like these two played a very important part too. But with the way Curry had other teams scrambling and breaking down rosters and having the entire NBA switch how they play basketball, just so they can guard this 6'3 light skinned dude is insane. And yeah. we haven't seen that type of Think impact about this before. Peak LeBron is the greatest player you've ever seen on the court. Maybe second greatest if you're Jordan guy, whatever. And yet people were still debating in 2016 if Curry was the best player in the world. It probably wasn't right. But the fact that that was even a debate that was like seriously <clears throat> had. Is ridiculous. Nobody else in this era has ever compared to LeBron in a single year. Yeah, bro. We've never seen, well, me personally, I've never lived through an era where basketball philosophy is just straight up, like, just changed and bent, and people see a new way of life now because of this era and run that Steph Curry was the driver of. And so he, yeah, S tier, clear as day, bro. Yep. Next up. 2021 Steph Curry when he won the scoring title before the year they won the championship. I actually think this is also S tier. Ooh. Ooh, I, I, I do. I think the fact that he was out there with no clay, 
and he was hooping with Damian Lee and Juan Toscano <laughs> Anderson. Kelly Oubre. Kelly everybody. I mean, they were triple teaming him at half yeah. court. He this this is one of those performances where it's like it, it gets forgotten because they they got knocked out in the play in game in the play in tournament. Yeah, but he was as efficient. Like everything that everybody had had always wanted to see from Steph, and like, okay, put the team on your back. They gave they gave him the worst roster in the league, and he did that. Yeah, yeah. People were always that like, was, why doesn't yeah. Steph Curry spam pick and rolls every play? And this year he was like, <laughs> fuck it, let me do it. And he just came out and won the scoring title in the year thirteen of his career. Like, yeah, that's absurd. It was that's something. Also, th- yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say just real quick. Something a lot of Warriors fans and NBA fans would just pick on is just how, really specifically Warriors fans, they would cry every single time over how much they want to see Steph Curry go on ball more because he's just really good at it. But because of the style of basketball that Steph Curry, I mean, that Steve Curry would rather defer to, Warriors fans and the, the entire NBA hasn't been able to do that. Just the other day, we saw a conversation on NBA Twitter about, oh, like, Steph Curry doesn't have a mid-range game. Kyrie Irving's mid-range game is better and all this other shit. And that's just, like, that conversation alone is the product of Steph Curry not being on ball as much, which he got the opportunity to do so back in 2021. And that just nailed in the coffin to all the doubts that anyone had. Yeah. And it was just... um I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, and the fact that it was post KD and that he proved that like, listen, I was overshadowed by this guy for a few years, but I'm still one of the best players in the NBA. Haven't lost a step since I won the MVP six years ago. It just did so much for revitalizing the conversation that no, this is one of the best players in the NBA and he can, will continue to be until we see otherwise. Exactly. Shout out to 32 but, years old, man. So God. is this better than 2016 though? No. It's not. Okay, good. Make, make sure no one's crazy over here. Mo? Yeah, yeah. No, listen. There's, there's tiers within the tier, and 2016 yeah. stands alone. Okay. What do you think, Mo? No, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's not okay. 2016. It's great, but it's not 2016. Just want to see if we can catch anybody lacking saying something crazy. <laughs> you guys passed. You want to bully so me. fucking hot in my room. I'm burning up in here. Strip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, next thing we're going to do. I'm going to show you guys some classic funny nba tweets and you guys are gonna have to rank them based on how funny they are okay okay so this should be good let's rank these classic funny nba tweets first up we got somebody say anthony edwards isn't playing fair this year <laughs> oh man they're I, just <laughs> this, is, this is crazy i don't this is just this is just a horny tweet man <laughs> <laughs> you're just telling on yourself with this one man exactly. facts yeah. He's got nothing to do with basketball. This guy's just like, Anthony Edwards is hot. That's all he's saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah say Anthony Edwards is hot. Oh, we, yeah, he on one this year just because he got a little fresh cut, cut off his, he's, he's done with his afro face, and he got a little earring in there too. Man. <laughs> one through uh, five, where are we ranking this? One through five? Uh, I'll go five. four. Ooh, I want to say five. I go, I'll go four. I don't think it's like the best, like, it's not the funniest thing I've ever seen, but it's very funny, but... Yeah. There's there's another level of, of funny. Okay. Okay. We can do four. All right. Next one. We have LeBron talking about keep that same energy when you're calling my team old just for them to not make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. This is listen, this is five out of five. Anytime LeBron tweets anything, it is a five out of five funny, hilarious moment because it's always going to come back around and be used as some type of meme. You should have never tweeted this when your entire team should be in a retirement home. This is just hilarious to see six months later. Was this early into the Russell Westbrook era? Yes. This is in August. Oh my God, bro. Yeah, this what do you what do you rank this, Donovan? We're gonna put this at we're gonna put this at number three. So this is funnier Ooh. than Anthony Edwards one? Three yeah. is. T- I th- I think we should put this, this at five. Funny. I think we should put this at five. I think that the moment behind this is more important because <laughs> they just literally lost and they were just they just had a dog shit year point blank period. So I won't put this at five. Right, okay, I'll we'll put it. I'll go five. I'll go with okay. you. Next up, we got St- <laughs> Kevin Durant <laughs> saying Scarlett Johansson. I will drink your bath water. <laughs> These are these are even funny. These are just random. Horny. <laughs> <laughs> these are just horny, horny NBA tweets. Wait. Kevin Durant's insane. <laughs> but this is this is 2011. Kevin Durant. He was not in college. He was in the NBA. Almost peak of powers too. What is wrong with the story this? titles? 
He can have any woman in the world that he wants. And he's tweeting this about Scarlet. This has to be top two, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll go I'll go two with you. I, this yeah. this is this is hilarious. The hashtag random <laughs> is so indicative of that era. It's this is funny. I just this I just so imagine him tweeting this out with those fake ass glasses that people used to wear back in the day too. Hashtag random. He's like, this is gonna hit. Hopefully she sees this. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, well, number uh, two. All right, next two one. For- Terry oh Rozier <laughs> saying Osama should have hooped because he was tall as hell. <laughs> <laughs> this is out of, this is out uh, of pocket. This is insane. number one though. This has yeah. to be number one. Yo, this is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yo, <laughs> tweeting this he's like six five. Bro, tweeting this <laughs> at eleven ten p.m. at night. Oh God, he was just watching a documentary, bro. He was just watching do- fresh off he a documentary high. tweet. He was high. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Re- <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Wait, Mikhail what? just chimed in and said, "This is the night that Osama was killed by SEAL Team Six. <laughs> Whoa! This <laughs> is this might have to be one. one. His first thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was. Why isn't he getting buckets from Michigan State? <laughs> <laughs> Stamp. This is one, oh, bro. No, this is this is one. This yeah. is one. Yeah. Razier is the funniest individual. Of he all thought. Time. He thought this like immediately after the news. He was like, "Oh my goodness." He said, "Damn." He's six five. <laughs> he could hoop That's with me. Of talent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he could have been uh, J. Cole. <laughs> uh, Hall of Fame tweet. <laughs> All right. That's number one. Last one we got, number three. Eric Bledsoe, I don't want to be here. He's just crying at this point. I remember this moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the funniest way to request a trade. I think this slots into number three perfectly. Yeah. I'm with that. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very like on all the things that like happens on NBA Twitter. This is very somehow just very average and just like okay. Like also, it's Eric Bledsoe requesting a trade. Go ahead, do whatever you <laughs> want. Like you're you're not you're not good enough to be subtweeting like this. No, the funniest thing is he tried to lie and say he was talking about he didn't want to be at a salon anymore because his wife was yeah. there for too long. <laughs> God, bro. The worst Cap. lie ever said. Cap. Yeah, bro. This is peak of power. <laughs> mini, mini muscles, uh, Eric Bledsoe. They know they called him mini LeBron Eric Bledsoe. So, yeah. Yeah, That's he funny. had the pull and the power to say that back then, but the context of it is just fucking hilarious, bro. Cause I don't think we've <laughs> seen, we may have not, still not haven't seen a player just tweet how they want to go by their NBA career. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's hilarious. All right. That's the end of that one. We got our ranking set one through five. Pretty funny. Next thing we got, we're going to talk about all-time NBA teams since we were talking about the best players of all time in this episode. And I'm going to name two NBA teams and we got to decide which one's all-time starting five is better. Real simple. Okay. You'll see them on screen. This, is, this should be fun. So which Ooh. NBA all-time team is better? Lakers versus Celtics. Ooh, this is, this is tough. It's actually not tough. We have to go. With, we have to go with the Lakers. The, the, I know the amount of talent that the Lakers have had in their entire franchise's history is absolutely just criminally insane. It's unfair what they've done their entire history. It's Bro, like, from head to toe, Magic better than Bob Cousy, Kobe better than Paul Pierce, LeBron better than Larry Bird, Anthony Davis is sadly not better than Kevin Garnett, but he was still very good, and it's. It's not a complete wash between the two. And Kareem, of course, he's better than Bill Russell, bro. So for almost yeah, from head to toe, you, it's a wash. If you want to be crazy and put Shaq at the four and just have him over Kevin Garnett, it's a clean sweep from the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You didn't even put Shaq in there. I didn't even realize that, bro. It's a clean sweep. It's not even goal. Just, this, uh, this, is, this is so sad because this is the Celtics, but they don't match. Yeah. Bob, Bob Cousy's, Cousy's getting right off the floor. <laughs> Post Post every not belong. He not gonna know what to do, bro. <laughs> he gotta go drive hey, what, a bus. What's Magic gonna do, Donovan? Love that clip. Uh. <laughs> All right, next one. We got the Thunder versus the Heat. Oh man, I love I'll, this so much, but it's probably gonna be. The Miami Heat? Am I crazy for tough. that? I don't oh, know. This the, is tough. The, again, the Thunder have three MVPs on their team, but the Heat have the GOAT and Dwayne Wade. That's kind of, that's kind of hard. They got 
You know the what? best I'm, player ever in LeBron at possibly the best player that the NBA has ever seen in LeBron in the Miami Heat jersey. D Wade is D Wade. Paul or Jimmy Butler's a fucking maniac. Chris Bosh is a <laughs> great piece. And then they got Tim Hardaway Jr. But Westbrook is Westbrook senior. senior. My bad. Tim Hardaway Senior. So this is tough. I'm I'm gonna go with Miami because there is no way that Russell Westbrook and James Harden are both playing good enough defense to stop Dwayne Wade and Tim Hardaway Jr. <laughs> Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to cross James Harden to the Senior. floor. Oh, I keep, yeah. <laughs> That's my fault. It's, listen, it's been, a long, it's been a long time. But those, those two, I say that like I watched him play. <laughs> those, two, those two guys are putting too much offensive pressure on Westbrook and Harden. They're going to dominate. And also, I'm not betting against LeBron. How the yeah, fuck is Sean Kemp going to guard LeBron? They have no hope. <laughs> he's going to pray. <laughs> yeah, bro. He's going to pray. He's going to try to get Sergi Blanca to go ahead and have some reinforcements in the back, but that shit not going to work, man. You're done. Listen, we damn near saw this matchup in real life, and this Heat team is even better than they were in real life, so it's going to be even less competitive than 2011 actually was, or 20, the 2012 yeah. actually was. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we got to go with Miami. Yeah. All right, next one. We have... The Knicks versus the Nets. This Ooh. is an interesting one. The, the Nets go have some firepower. I the love Nets the is, way this Nets, Nets team live. fits, bro. It's a beautiful fit on the court. Jason Kidd, James Harden, Vince Carter, Brooke Lopez. Wait. I'm not going to lie. This is different Nets than Brooke Lopez. Sweep. This okay. might not even be competitive. I'm not going to lie. Okay. But sweep I don't is, know about sweep. Sweep is a bit much. It's not going to be necessarily a fantastic fun game to watch because the the, the Nets are the Nets are open the ass. Listen, I think if the, we're playing this game, if we are playing this game pre two thousand, I think the Knicks have a they have a really really dude, good chance to win this game. Bernard King is having a stroke once everybody. James Harden hits saying. him with a step back. He's all, having all a stroke. Doing, every listen, Bernard King, Melo, and even Patrick Ewing. Post fades all day. And I don't know if anybody can stop it. So if you're gonna have Willis Reed running on the perimeter with Kevin Durant running off of screens and transition, he's gonna be gassed by the second they quarter. He's gonna go that. into they cardiac arrest. That. Listen, they didn't why do that. Why wouldn't the Nets just do that? What do you mean? They didn't do that before two thousand. That's why I said <laughs> pre pre two thousand? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, 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 this no. Nets team would run them off of the floor. They'd have no answer for Kevin Durant. Yeah, bro. Nah. Who's their wing stopper? Camelo Anthony? <laughs> Woo, cement. Okay. Disagree. No way. <laughs> I'm sure you do, Knicks fan. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know the vibes. You know the Nets and four. All right, oh, next one. Okay, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> next weird. one we got the Bucks versus the Spurs. Oh, man. This is one. so hard. Giannis and Spurs Kareem and Ray Allen. Giannis and Kareem together with spacing? I don't know. Tim Duncan and David Robinson together? I mean... With with Kawhi, with prime Kawhi, too? Yeah. Exactly. Tony Parker always gets I'm, swept I'm under the rug. I'm going with Spurs on this one. I'm, I'm yeah, waiting. head to I'm, toe, I'm it might be the Spurs. Head to, head to toe, I'm going to have to go with the Spurs because you can do nothing about Tim Duncan and Dave Robinson. Dave Robinson. Well, I said that. You can't do nothing about Giannis and Kareem. Yeah, but Tony Parker and George Gervin and Kawhi Leonard fucking moves me compared to Sidney Moncrief. Shout out to Oscar Robinson for sure, but I'm sorry, but you just can't do Dude, nothing Giannis with Giannis and Kareem game. versus Tim Duncan and David Robinson? I don't even know who would come on top of that. That would just be a rock fight. Straight defense. I need I need that in NBA Jam like immediately, dude. Dude, the universe <laughs> might just implode because this is just too much firepower. Like, there's no clear answer as to who would win that battle. You know, George Gervin and Kawhi might be the deciding factor because they would cook Ray Allen and Sidney Moncrief. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what but I'm Tony saying. Tony Parker's getting posted up every play by Oscar Robertson. So, <laughs> Listen, like, they, they, with they Oscar that's Robinson okay. Right there. <laughs> That's okay, bro. You can go ahead and you can try to go ahead and post up. Do that all day if that's your best play. You're not I mean, going to beat them with Oscar Robinson running post hooks. I don't give a fuck. Listen, he's they're not they're not going inside the inside the paint because Tim Duncan and Dave Robinson's there. That 17 foot old man just that's going to be right there all I day. The only advantage Oscar Robinson Oscar Robertson might have is of course that size and also just put that fucking fro into that man's eyes and you're good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Put extra product in. Put extra product in your hair that day too, and he ain't seeing or smelling shit. And you're good, bro. Yeah, I'm going with the Spurs. 
I'm yeah, I'm going with them too. Spurs for sure. All right, next one. The 76ers versus the Suns. Huh. Why is Kevin Durant on here? Because <laughs> he's on <laughs> there. Who do you want me to put the three? Huh? Who do you want me to put the three? Somebody who played more than 20 games for the Suns. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the he best played more than 20 miles. games. Stop this. If you don't put Sean Marion on this on this list, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be better if I put Sean Marion. I'm, I'm going with the 76ers. Why? <sighs> They are, they're bigger. Listen, Amari Stoudemire is going to have his hands full with Will Chamberlain. <laughs> yeah, that's that's honestly like the weakest point for me. And that's where wait, I'm like. My, wait, my, my bad. We actually have to go with the Suns. There is no shooting on Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Charles, Charles Barkley is the three. Nah, I... <laughs> Everybody, you want to talk about pre two thousands bully ball? Everybody's just going to be in a circle around the bay. I think I have to go with Phoenix. It just makes more sense. Yeah, but that size is crazy, though, man. Low key, low key, low key this seventy sixers team is just a better version of the two thousand one sixers. Where it's like it's no shooting whatsoever. Everybody else can handle the defense. You just let AI cook. They're gonna have five guys standing in the dunker spot just watching. <laughs> uh, yeah, now we, we have to go with a '96 Jazz game. <laughs> yeah, the now, offense. We have to go with the Suns. Yeah, the the type of offense that I, I that I could imagine them running. Well, Charles Barkley versus Charles Barkley. I don't know why, but I just registered in my head that there's. <laughs> that's funny, but yeah, no, this team this team spacing is insane, bro. They're whooping the ass. It's definitely a very much like a. How do I explain this? This is very much a battle of eras. Like, do you want to go pace exactly. in space or just I'm big as shit and I'm your small? <laughs> I'll go Suns. Exactly. Yeah. Suns. Yeah. Right, cool, okay. Cool, cool. Next one. The Cavs versus the Bulls. Kyrie, Donovan Mitchell, LeBron, Larry Nance, and Brad. Sheesh. That's uh, a lot of firepower. I don't, Listen, you got uh, this is tough, you got the ninety six Bulls with Derrick Rose MVP D Rose, center? bro. I and think, artist Gilmore. You know what? I'm t- I'm taking the Bulls just because I think I think Gilmore clears Brad. I think Dennis Rodman would have Larry Nance in a straight jacket. <laughs> so Probably. it's listen, and also Donovan Mitchell. Where's where's he scoring? Because he's either gonna have to be guarded by Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, or Dennis Rodman. And then <laughs> he's 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 locked up. He's like, yeah, he's I'll, take, I'll take sure. Chicago. Oh, man. I don't know which way to go. I don't know which way to Even go. Even more, though. Because, like, the, guarding? Bro. Is Don Mitchell guarding Scottie Pippen? He's, oh, yeah, man, he's, he's getting attacked. He's, he's getting bodied. cooked. He's Easily. getting cooked. But the spacing for the Bulls is so screwed. It's the battle yeah, layers. <laughs> but, yes, and here's Jordan better chuck some threes. <laughs> Scotty, you post up in the corner. <laughs> Listen, they will win this matchup 79 to 66, and I will take the Bulls. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for me to not pick Derrick Rose next to Michael Jordan. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Just imagine the speed of those two guys flying up on fast breaks, and then Scottie Pippen is a playmaker in the running it. Like, what do you even do? Yeah, nah, man. Yeah, this disgusting. is Yeah. This is futuristic ball right here. I'm taking the Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> Clean sweep for the Bulls. All right, man. That's the last one of those matchups we got. That was dope. Next thing we good got list, to, get, to get out of here. We're going to do something. So last week we talked about which player had the higher career earnings. This time we're going to do which player has scored more points in their career. Mm. So this should be fun. Okay, okay. So this is really going to quit quiz, y'all. Which NBA player has scored more points in their career? First off, James Harden or Patrick Ewing? I ain't gonna lie, foul marching Harden plus three point shooter Harden. I'm gonna lean that way 110, percent bro. He averaged 36 points per game for a season, I believe. Right? Was 36, <laughs> so 37? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm taking, leaning Harden. I'm taking James. I'm taking James Harden. James Harden's worst season, actually, no, because because Pat because Pat did have a lot of good seasons, but Pat had like one like amazing scoring season, and that's basically just every year of James Harden in Houston. So I'm, yeah. I'll take James. He had five of Patrick Ewing's best season. Hard so, easy, bro. James Harden has 24,693 points. Patrick Ewing's at 24,815. 130 more. Then Orlando Magic Years got us. 
<laughs> Damn. That's, that's awesome. crazy. Yeah, underestimate the longevity. Yeah, that's Next an important up. factor. Yep. Next up, Paul Pierce or Kevin Garnett? Oh, this is tough. Because they both played a while. Yeah. Yep. This is this is tough. I mean, but K- KG wasn't doing anything except yelling at Car Anthony Towns when he was in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over <laughs> Paul Pierce was over here calling. Like Paul KG Pierce was over here calling Jonathan Haslam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts. Paul Pierce was over here calling game against the Washington Wizards, bro, or with the Washington yeah. Wizards. So he also <laughs> averaged fourteen points per game that year. I think. <laughs> you know what? Give me. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna lean towards this Paul this Pierce this because I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna go. With Paul I'm gonna lean the. I want to lean towards more the perimeter player for this one. Mm. You know what? Okay. Nah, I'm, I'll go Kevin. I'll go Kevin Garnett. You played yourself. Paul Pierce has scored three hundred and something. Wait, uh, <laughs> let me do the math in my head. You played yourself. Paul Pierce has scored three hundred twenty-six more points than him. Yeah. What it says that Kevin Garnett scored more. Yeah, it does. That is Paul. That is Nikhil not typing the number right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kevin Garnett has scored 26,071 Paul Pierce is 26,397 mm. Ooh, okay yeah okay yeah. I see I see yeah I should have yep. just stuck with the perimeter player yeah, yeah. 300 yeah. The, three, more. the three point shooting is what did it for me man and plus the <laughs> level of longevity too <laughs> alright next one we got Mike Bibby or Bill Russell Oh I'm my god, bro! Bill Russell like this, they're <laughs> setting him up for failure. Mike Bibby, you know I have uh. to go with Mike Bibby. <laughs> you know I have to go with Mike Bibby. Bibby, damn man, I don't want to do this. I'm gonna side with the side of history. Give me Bill Russell. <laughs> this is the most unexpected pair of names I've ever seen. <laughs> I know what in what light would they ever be in the same conversation ever, bro? Within the same sentence ever. <laughs> this is the first time <laughs> in history you did something this is special right here, Isaac. life he's ever been compared to bill russell congratulations to you mike Bibby. you have scored 176 more points than bill russell in your career <laughs> this oh, is crazy criminal <laughs> we need to retract some points from mike Bibby's career bro because this can't happen <laughs> this is shameful in nba history <laughs> all right next one we have dwight howard or paul george um. Hmm. See, is, I want to say tough? Paul George easy, but that boy snapped his leg, and he's had like a ton of injuries. Yeah, I do. See, but this, Dwight this Howard stuff. has had injuries too, though. But Paul George had a couple years where he was like creeping up. You know, like he was still learning the. the he wasn't so that he, guy. Yeah, exactly. he wasn't that guy off rip. It took him like three, four years to but you, be the. Uh, but you know what? Dwight's been in the league for seventeen years now. Yeah. I'll, I'll go Dwight Howard. But he's also been like not in the league for the past three years. He's been pretty much irrelevant. Yeah, and Paul George is one of the he got that workout with the Warriors. We got to add just plus. <laughs> oh 10 my god! <laughs> <laughs> Paul George is a great three point shooter as well. So this is hard as hell. I might on. lean towards. But, Dwight but Dwight, Howard. But Dwight was never a scorer like that, so it was it's tough. I know. I'll go it's Dwight. Tough. I'll go Dwight. I'll go Dwight. I don't feel good, but I'll go Dwight. Yeah, I want to go Dwight. I don't feel good either. He PG missed a lot you of time. You should feel great. Dwight Howard has scored three thousand more points than Paul George. Damn it, I, Paul! I, I what never the hell? games add up. I Listen, never had forty a doubt. games a season doesn't help. I never had I'm, a doubt. I'm right, but I hate that I'm right. I I'm supposed <laughs> to rep this man in this po- fucking podcast, man. Shit. He was the whole <sighs> year in the past three years. He's played like forty games a season. Yeah, exactly. That's what did it, bro. That's what did it for him. Yep. Next one. Kyrie Irving or Rudy Gay? Damn it, what? Rudy! <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Why are they even... <laughs> what? Nah. <laughs> to be honest with you, this is a trick question, Donovan, because Rudy Gay been a bucket. You know this. You said this is before I do. this podcast. I do know this, but Rudy it- Gay has also missed time. He's been hurt a little bit. True. I I'm going to take Kyrie Irving. I think this but one. We, mm-hmm. What I think I think Isaac is trying to set us up with this one. I'm going to take Kyrie Irving. But Kyrie missed a lot of time too, bro. 
with the whole anti-vax thing. And then, of course, he's had so many injuries before in the past. Rudy's Rudy been consistent. He's still getting minutes. I think he's on the Hawks now or something like that, bro. <laughs> No, I'm taking Kyrie. I'm taking Kyrie. Give me Rudy. I'm going with Gay. Give me Gay. Okay. Kyrie Irving has 15,712 points. Rudy Gay has cleared 17,000 in his career. I knew it. How can you forget about those Memphis days, bro? You the one over here repping that up. It was grit and grind. They were scoring 82 points a game. And he scored (laughs) 17 of them consistently. (laughs) Slow and steady wins the race, I guess. Facts. Facts. Last one. Jamal Crawford or Scottie Pippen? Oh, this is so... I want to say this is easy because this man played until he was like 39 or something like that. I'm going Jamal Crawford. Yeah, bro. He was he was like a two times, three times, six man of the year, bro. Got a lot Listen. of meaningless buckets. I'm going with Jamal for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. His final answers? Yeah, I'm going I'm going Jamal Crawford. I think that fifty point game he had at the end of his career. Oh my god. That, <laughs> that, oh, that would be really, so funny if he if he was ahead by like twenty. <laughs> that really pushed him over the edge. Yeah. Give me Jamal, Jamal Crawford scored nineteen thousand four hundred and nineteen. That's Scotty cool. Pippen's below 19K. Jamal Crawford wins. <sighs> Damn, bro. That that three-pointer hits, bro. Three-point <laughs> plays hits. Soda's playing wow. for a million seasons. <laughs> True. Born bucket. Yeah, That's man. Good. That's the end of the episode. Bet. If people are still here, what should they comment? Before they comment, they need to remember to follow us on Twitter because we're going to be giving you a, a PS5 by the time Facts. we hit 10K true, followers on true. Twitter. And then also you have to go ahead and like this video, give the podcast five stars on all audio platforms, and you cannot forget to join the Discord. Now, <laughs> what should they say? I think we, we, we said something about Kyle Lowry earlier. Yeah, let's, oh, even the second one. So we, let's, let's separate those so we know people that watch to the middle and the end. Right now, what should they comment? Just think of a good one. Oh, that's true. Hmm. This is really tough. Comments. Hmm. I'll make sure it's a good one. Okay. Comment, <laughs> I want that PS5. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, that's not slam. Don't nah. say that. If you say that, you're blocked. The uh, fucking- <laughs> you know what? If you're, if you're still here, comment Jason Richardson is him. Yes, Jason like Richardson it. is him. I like it, bro. There we go. That's the end of the episode. I'm sleepy as hell. I'll see y'all later. (laughs) See (laughs) y'all.